Benny, bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Everyone! I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe. Let me explain something to you. Um, I am not Mr. Lebowski. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. No one is to stone anyone until I blow this whistle. You can't fight in here. This is the war room. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Oh, Lord. You can imagine where it goes from here. Hello and welcome to Zito's Gang number 28. On today's show we have Mad Max Fury Road, Star Wars Rogue One, Resident Evil and the Stan Lee film and much more up in the Zito's Gang. But today we are joined by Greg Marshall from Board Gamers, the TV show Board Gamers. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's an awesome show. Also my good friend, Adrian Redhead. I totally <laughs> forgot his name, surname. <laughs> But trust me, he's a good friend of mine. And of course, we have our host, Joseph Buchanan. What's up, everybody? How are you today, Joe? Not bad. How uh, about yourself? How are you doing, guys? All good? I, I'm, I'm loving the plug. I'm, <laughs> and the fact that you remember my surname. I feel, I feel a better friend than Adrian. Uh, what's his name? Uh, redhead, Redhead. Well, to be honest... Yeah, I, I don't feel the love here. Don't feel to, the love. To, to be honest, so Greg's actually my oldest friend here. So that is true. That is true. <laughs> Anyway, we love you, Adrian. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, so on the top of the show, we usually start off with the trailers that dropped this week, and um, uh, we're going to start off with Bruce Lee versus Wong Jack. And this is like a, another biopic. Uh, Bruce Lee by a pick, joining the thousands that are already out there. And um, okay, guys, um, I'm just going to play this in the background, and you give me your your plus and minuses of this trailer. What do you guys think of it? Well, my biggest issue with it thus far, apart from the uh, Caucasian guy who seems to not be able to act his way out of a wet paper bag, <laughs> is the fact that Bruce Lee just comes off as a dick in it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just, you don't. You meant to root for Bruce Lee, and yes, he was a little bit arrogant, but almost like philosophically arrogant. This guy's just a twat, and it's like you, 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 you if it, in a classic, it, it's like the um, school ground. Who would win in a fight between Bruce Lee and so-and-so? And that's a classic. This is an expansion of this. Before the Expendables came out and literally did that. Who would yeah. win in a fight between Dolph Ludgren and Jet Li and so forth. Before that happened, this would have been that ultimate movie. Except for you want Bruce Lee to, to lose because he's a twat. So, yeah. That, yeah. Based on the uh, trailer anyway. So. And that's just only off the 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I mean. Um, it's People said that Bruce Lee was arrogant, but this, this trailer makes him out to be... Hey, this guy was a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, one of my favourite... I mean, I mean, I'm in a massive 80s movie fan and stuff like that and what have you. And he is literally channelling, um, you know, Johnny from Cobra Kai from Karate Kid. <laughs> Seriously, back in the day, you were rooting for the under guy, the underdog to beat the shit out of him. But uh, but suddenly in this, you know, he's, he's the guy you're meant to root for, so... Yeah, yeah. I love he doesn't sweep the knee. That's Karate Kid, man. <laughs> And uh, um, whoever they've got as Bruce Lee, I mean, he's got the he's got some of the physical presence of it uh, of of what Bruce Lee was, but I, I guess because um, th- th- Bruce Lee was such a character, it's very good, it's going to be very hard to find anyone like him again. He was a, such a big character, um, and um, yeah, as you said, with the, uh, this random Caucasian uh, actor dude. Uh, he's, 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 he seems to be there as, as he's a centerpiece. He's, he's almost like a centerpiece for the for the for both the whoever um, this the shining monk that um, Bruce Lee is fighting. Uh, I don't. But his job seems to be just a young Basil exposition. He's just there to serve <laughs> the purpose. Hey, Come this on. is what's going on. Hey, this is monk. Hey, you you can fight him, can't you, Bruce Lee? <laughs> it, 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 it just bridges it all together. It's it's. He's a token white guy. He really is. I just, I, I, I'm not convinced. All of, I watch this and I just sit there and go, I need to rewatch Dragon. That wasn't. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah, what yeah. I, that's what I feel when I watch this. No, where, Dragon. Now that was a fucking movie. Uh, but that was such a good film. I love that film. We're saying that. I'm still. I'm fa- I just want to see where this goes because it looks. It gets very fantastical towards the end as well. Um, 
it, especially when it has um, it goes to the X Men tagline, um, the, the yeah from the martial arts team that bought you uh, X Men, and it gets a little bit. I don't know. It it turns into something else after that. It's yeah. I just hopefully they've they've just happened in these particular clips. The Bruce Lee comes across there again. I hope there's there's a side that makes you want to root for him. Because, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, of course, he's going to win probably against this guy. But you don't want him to, and that's going to be a bit of an anticlimax in this movie. So. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, Satch, anything to add on that? Because he's not said a word. Um, <laughs> well. <laughs> I'm going to check it out because, you know, there's a big gap in the market for Kung Fu films at the moment in the cinema. Obviously, I'm interested in seeing it because it's a Bruce Lee film, but you guys nailed it on the head. Bruce Lee was a fucking cunt in this trailer. <laughs> he really well, was. I'd like I mean, to say, I, I'd like to point out, I said dick and twat. I mean, like, <laughs> he I'm, said the outward. Look, I'm, look, I'm just, I'm just, I'm Can just you give me the, I need to set, mark that down. Setting the tone, man. Um, just, yeah, um, Totally agree with you guys. Just eh, not really selling it to me. I mean, like even the trailer itself comes off of the type of trailer you'd get from the nineteen nineties, rather than something you'd get in two thousand sixteen. Well, here's the issue, especially at the end. If it's not selling it to us, the big issue here is the fact that it um it's it hasn't been picked up by anyone. They need to sell it to someone, and if everyone decides that Bruce Lee comes across as a douche in this, then it's either going to be massive. Massive re, you know, retakes to try to make him more likable, or the yeah. film might not get distribution, and that would be a big issue. <laughs> and on, and, and, and not on the point, may I say, on the point of selling the film by the fight team of X Men. I mean, seriously. I mean, like, they, don't get me wrong. You don't need a famous director to sell a movie, but don't start picking at stuff. The co-writer of the Adjustment Bureau. I saw the co-writer, not the writer. I mean, like, come on, man. Wow. That's they. They were. Clearly scraping barrels to sell this, okay? Because if you go go into co-writers and fight directors, you know what I mean. No one gives a fuck what that guy was called on X Men choreographing the scenes. It's not like he was Yun Wu Ping, which is a fight name for martial arts guys. You know what I mean? From the so, guy who once shared a lift with Ray Liotta. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. From I mean, the like, man who previously served coffee as a barrister to Harrison Ford at one time. From Barbara Streisand's hairdresser. Oh, wait, that's John Peters. Um, <laughs> Why on earth did you know that? <laughs> oh, trust me, John Peters is, fa f fam is a famous hairdresser that failed upwards. He's now a movie producer. He directed... He produced such classics of... Superman Returns, Batman vs. Superman, um, Man of Steel. So basically, this is the man is that should never be let near a Superman <laughs> franchise ever again. And the well, thing is, he already has. He's, oh yeah, he's, I, I he's forgot. Got... His big cinematic mark, The Wild Wild West. Ah, yeah, there you go. There we oh, go. Oh, wow. Check, check, check. Kevin. Wiki, wiki, wow, wiki, wow, check wow. John Schnepp's The Death and Return of Superman documentary or more on crazy stories of John Peters. Okay, yeah. uh, I'm going to get it back on track yeah. here because I don't want it to be a two-hour marathon. Yeah, you are right. <laughs> uh, Let's go. Um, okay, so the second trailer is The Bastards, uh, which is which is quite funny. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't... I, I saw Ed Helms and I saw, oh, okay, it's going to be one of the run-of-the-mill uh, comedies, but I quite enjoyed the, the trailer. Uh, hopefully, we didn't see everything that was funny in it that was going to be... That, was, that represents what was going to be in the film, but... Um, to to me, uh, I was I was shocked by it because it made me laugh, and uh, usually these days comedy trailers don't make me laugh. I, th I my issue is as as you say, you know, they normally put the funniest bits in the um, trailer, and um, Ed Helms is excellent. Owen Wilson, I'm beginning to get a little bit tired of now. I, just, I think Ed Helms has replaced him as like he's clearly the funny guy. But there was only one thing that made me particularly laugh in this. But in fairness, it was very funny and it yeah. made me laugh out loud. It was placed very it, well. It was placed very well. It, I, we can't repeat it on this, even, yeah. <laughs> even for due to political credits, we can't say it. Um, but Just watch the trailer, it's great. But it, uh, yeah, but you never know because they, you know, they say they put the funniest things in there. Um, digressing briefly, but I recently saw Social Party and they put the bits that they were funny in there that they could get away with. Right, the right. The funniest <laughs> thing was not in there and nor should it 
should ever be allowed in a trailer that could be seen by other people. <laughs> um, um, if you've seen it, you know the one I'm talking about. You don't even have to. So, but yeah, I don't know. It looks interesting. It's got a very good cast. It's got people like Glenn Close and J.K. Simmons in it who are... You know, yeah, J.K. I'll watch anything with J.K. Simmons in it. Um, um, most who can general. be very, very funny as well as be you know an amazingly talented actor. So, um, And Ving Rhames uh, as a yeah, surprise yeah. thing, which if you understand the premise of the movie is a very strange cameo of... Yeah, yeah, very strange cameo. <laughs> it's two white men trying to figure out who their father are, and he's one of the candidates. <laughs> Once again, you know, I don't want to get too delicate, but yeah, you're going, you're going very meta there. If 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 he was the father, it's like, what, how did that happen? You, you have to, you'd have to go right into that. But um, yeah, this is this is the plot. <laughs> this this is excellent. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, sorry, it's, it's to, to suggest what you can't see in the podcast is yeah, but. Um, I'm going to put the trailer in the description and you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, but um, it's <laughs> very well crafted trailer, if, if that. If, the, if, this, if this is the funniest thing about the film, then the, tra- the trailer was great. That's, that's what I can yeah, say. Yeah, the there was a couple of other bits that, that tickled me, but it really yeah. was that joke that made me laugh out loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Off no. the back of that, I might go see it, but, you know, it's not going to be on the top of my list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, it's, it's one of those uh, comedies that... Or either, it's like a, a bit like The Hangover, really. Um, when you first saw the trailer, it's a, the premise was interesting. Oh, right, these guys go and, and uh, to Las Vegas, have a uh, one last party of debauchery, and then they they can't remember what happened. It was it was an interesting premise, but when you actually saw it, it was it was actually really great. It was, but it was because it was like the, the classic frat party stuff, but not done with frat age kids. And then it was basically Memento. <laughs> but in the same party. Yeah, that's that was very fucking true. genius. Yeah. It was such a clever idea yeah. um, that they yeah. couldn't then live up to it when they did. You the know, two and three. The two and three. But the first one is is you know is is a almost like a landmark in yes. in a new type of comedy, clever com- comedy that has heart and has. Gross out humor and has a storyline, yeah, and has Mike Tyson and a tiger. Yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyson and tiger. Can't go, you can't go wrong with that. Uh, okay, so uh, onto the next trailer, which is Flock of Dudes. Um, okay, so um, I didn't. Mm. <sighs> speaking of frat party humor, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Speaking, yeah. This is, I think this is what this is about, <laughs> but um, it's very. It doesn't really give you. A pre- it, it just seems like these guys grew up together. They want to continue having good times, but um, they lose. The, one of the one of the people in the group loses loses their friendship or loses their. I don't know. I I, 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 I don't. To grow up and he tries to ditch his friends and they just not. What's this film called again? A uh, flock of dudes. Flock of dudes. I I watched I watched the whole of this trailer and I was none the wiser of yeah, anything I, on the trailer. All I know is that aforementioned guy who met Ray Liotta in a in a lift managed to drag him into this, yeah. and he is the only person I recognise, the only famous face. There is this one guy I'm staring at now who I remember being in some teen thing once. I know He's, he used to be in a show called Don't Trust the Bitch and um, Number Twenty Seven. Uh, it was a TV show with that. Check that's in um, uh, Jessica Jones. Just, yeah, yeah. And it's got one of the blokes who was barely so in the Bridge Perfect for movies. A of episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dies uh, not um, she's in New Girl, and that's and then you've got Ray Liotta. That's that's all I know. This is a film made by people who are always seventeenth down the casting list <laughs> in, in other films that you may or may not have watched. Uh, it's even got Jeff Ross, who who's who's a comedian that we don't yeah, know outside of, um, you know, that's not really known outside of America. And all he's famous for is being uh, a, a professional roaster. He's a comedian who does roasting of celebrities. So whenever they did the uh, James Franco roast or the Donald Trump roast, the Justin Bieber roast, he's one of the roasters. Um, and now they've put him in a movie, and he's like, he's not even that funny as a roaster now. He's got oh, yeah. a role. Yeah, I, I, I saw him recently on uh, the Tonight Show, the Stephen Colbert show, the yes. Tonight Show, and, um, and that's that's how I know. Oh, right, okay, that's what he does, and yeah. it's, um, and I've seen him in this. It's like, okay, well, uh, go figure. I, I couldn't tell you at all what it's about. I, I, there wasn't even the one joke that the other film had that made me laugh out loud. No, there was not nothing at all. that made me even. I think it's more it's confusing. Meant to be a, it's meant to be a comedy, but I'm trying to keep up with the plot. If there, there, there such a thing exists, there was no reminiscent of a plot there. It was just uh, a bunch of. It was a, a flock of dudes. Hey, we're having a drink. 
Uh, you remember <laughs> that thing? Okay, yeah. And then his girlfriend shows up. It's our anniversary. Okay. Um, where does it go from there? I don't want to be friends with you guys. Um, and then... That's it. It kind of fades away. I, I have no idea what it's what about. What happened to the age-old age of trailers where, you know, sell the premise, sell the idea? If you can't sell the premise, what the hell do people know there? This summer, <laughs> Roger Moore wants a bagel. Ma- Roger Moore? <laughs> Don't know. So, kids, Roger Moore was one of the. Okay, I'm gonna. We're gonna. This is gonna turn into a four-hour podcast. But Roger Moore was the best James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Live and oh, let die. Live and if you listen die. carefully, that is a can of worms being opened, <laughs> <laughs> which we're not going to talk about right now because we want to keep, we wanna keep oh, this short. He so wants to come back on that, but he can't. He knows he has to be the administrator. <laughs> moving on to the next thing. Yes, moving. Go to the next trailer. Hold <laughs> on. Roger Moore, kids. Back him out. Back him out. <laughs> okay, um, uh, so next one is uh, Nocturnal Animals. And, um, Again, you don't have a clue what's going on. Yeah. This one you have less of a clue, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a. I've figured out that it's a. Um, suspense? See, uh, I don't know. What was he called? It's suspense. I, okay, so we've got Amy Adams. Uh, looks like she's split with her husband, who we later on in the trailer find out to be Jake Gyllenhaal. He's clearly some script writer or book writer who writes a whole story about. Looks like a. a in a, a revenge. Is it a revenge book that he writes about what he thinks his. Let's go to so having a go at trying to guess the plot here because I'm <laughs> none the wiser. I thought it was the. F- no, I have no idea. I couldn't begin to explain this. This trailer literally goes. Dong. <laughs> he said that thing one time and he was like this. Yeah. Dong. <laughs> <laughs> this thing happened and we can never escape what we did. <laughs> I'm a bit of a nocturnal thing. I stay awake at night. Dong. <laughs> I'm sure I've seen perfume adverts that go like this. I'm sure. <laughs> it looks like again it's got a stellar cast. I mean it's got um it's got Laura Linney, it's got Jake Gyllenhaal, it's got Aaron um Thompson in in a role that I didn't even recognise him. He's so sort of bearded up and the like. Yeah, so sort of uh, it's got um <laughs> Oh, what's his face? Zod. 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 <laughs> Zod. Um, what's Zod. his name? Uh, oh, God, he's Michael Shannon. Yeah. Michael, Michael Shannon. Michael um, Shannon. So all excellent actors, but and it's you know it looks very tense, but we have no idea what it's about. But then, as as Joseph said, off 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 pod as such that uh, you can't give too much away with these things. If you actually showed more, then you'd just be spoiling it possibly. So, but the, the, that's the thing. That's as you said with with trailers these days. The the art has been lost. Where. Um, in the nineties was, I think, was when the golden era of trailers was. Is where you could, you could, it gave you an explanation of what it was, and it did it in a very linear fashion, and you'd want to see it. Yeah, it's, and you had movie trailer van. It was simple, and I, I don't know how that art has been lost, but through, I would say after the, the Matrix, because all the Ma- as far as I'm concerned, all the Matrix trailers were great. Um, it managed to explain what it was without spoiling the plot of any of the films. Well, keep, that, it, keep that mystery as well, especially yeah. with the first film. Yeah. You, I mean, like, you know what? The second film, as much as people be different mm. in opinion about the sequels and stuff, they, that second yeah, movie, the, Reloaded's trailer, got butts and seats. Like, you were hyped. It said all it needed to say. The pro- you know what I mean? My issue with trailers nowadays yeah. is is there is announcements. There are trailers to announce the announcement oh, of yeah, the trailer. Yeah, I hate those things. So we are now announcing the announcement that there will be an announcement yeah. on the teaser trailer. Yeah. Not the official trailer, the teaser of for the, the teaser. trailer. Yeah. And then that's the teaser for the teaser trailer, which is the teaser for the trailer trailer, yeah. which will be yeah. the first of the four trailers that will then <laughs> show the whole of the fucking plot at some point. And loads of scenes that will not make it into the movie. And stuff like that. And it's just like, I can't keep up. There used to be one trailer. And now we have trailers for trailers and teasers and announcements of trailers. Yeah. Announce yeah. the fucking film. Don't announce a trailer. Yeah. I know. It's, 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 cra- it's Maybe crazy. Maybe I'm just too old-fashioned. No, no. Like, but, <laughs> but I think if everything was was, was simplified... Sorry about that, folks. Uh, <laughs> Random people making noise outside. Uh, if everything was simplified, the kid or something. <laughs> if everything was simplified, in the sense, okay, this is your one trailer. Go, yeah. <laughs> just market that. You don't have to market the other other things. That if it's if there's a feature, fair enough. But that's your trailer. There's your feature. 
his um, the interview of the cast. It, it doesn't have to be more um, uh, uh, over. They're overdo it. They're overdoing it uh, with with some trailers. Like with Batman versus Superman trailers. There's like thirty eight of them. Yeah, yeah. There's a, this is Batman. This is Superman. Who will win? Uh, you it probably will be. It should be Superman. But yeah. Anyway, don't get uh, it going on that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm a Marvel person, and the thing is, is Batman versus Superman should literally be Superman going. Oh bless Batman! <laughs> Stop it now! And then Batman goes, no, no, I'm gonna break you! And then and then he basically just goes squish. And <laughs> yeah. Even with his armor, he should be able to literally fold him like a paper plate. And bless you! I told you to leave it alone. I'm a god. You are a silly little man. Um, don't get me wrong. I love Batman, and I hate Superman for that exact reason. Um, yeah, but yeah. I haven't seen the model ones for that. But no, this this go back to this trailer as we've got. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just I think it could have done with as much as sometimes the voiceover man with his husky tones is too much. I think if there was someone sort of saying, you know, in a world where this happened, will you be the person who goes as far as that? and just <laughs> give us an idea of what it's about? Yeah. Instead, they're talking in really beautiful, well acted sound bites which have no connection to each other, yeah. and you watch it and you go, that looks beautiful. It could be anything. Mm. Seriously. Hello. Yeah, I think you guys nailed it on the head there. <laughs> okay. Been directed by Tom Ford, who also did a, a single man with Colin Firth. He's also been, he's also worked with Jake Gyllenhaal on a number of projects before Nightcrawler and End of Watch, which he produced also. Um, so yeah, it'll be good to see what you know. I think he's got a strong <coughs> back catalog of movies that he's done. He's also written it himself. Um, trailer to me, even though. I know what the fuck I'm looking at. You know, it kind of interests me in terms of the talent that that's behind it and stuff. Um, I had no clue about what this movie would be and whatnot. I'm interested to see what it can be, but I mean, um, it's that trailer doesn't really sell the movie for me in terms of, you know what I mean, what you guys just mentioned. I stuff. think we've seen a lot of trailers and very few of them have actually given you the premise across. The um, the Bastards did, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and we had a vague idea that, you know, cocky Bruce Lee wants to fight a man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the other ones are lots of much ado about nothing. And um, what's interesting is, is a bit of foreshadowing, is, is you can do less and more with trailers and the next trailer we'll look at will actually show that because it's massively understated and really gripping. But... But you, so you don't have to have a lot in the trailers to show it, but you should, people yeah. should know what the film is going to watch, or it won't draw people in. So, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I've got nothing more to say on this, and so we'll move straight on to uh, Annabelle two. And uh, there's not really much to say on this one, only that um, it looked scary. Yeah, it does look scary. Uh, but the, the thing is, I've not, I didn't see the Annabelle for the first Annabelle, and I wasn't interested in seeing it, but. Just going on what this trailer did. Um, I mean, it's it, there's a, it's, it, there's only there's no dialogue in the trailer. I think there's a, like one word of dialogue in the trailer, yeah. and um, it it's more of a um, it, it's it's uh, again. I'll put this in the description, so uh, not if, if you've not already seen it. But yeah, it's someone else. It's, it's a trailer which is one scene, that's all it is. It is one scene where they're not showing anything. It's, it's actually sound, it's more it's to, do all to do with the sound effects and it is fantastically done. It's well cut, it is visceral, it is a terrifying sound and what is suggested is absolutely horrifying. And, you know, it has off to it because, I mean, I haven't seen The Conjuring or The Conjuring 2. I wasn't interested in the fact that the horror movies now have their spin-off characters. To me, this is... The new Chucky that I grew up with in Child's Play, even though there is now a new Chucky in Child's Play, so that's really confusing. But based on the trailer, I'd be interesting. I like a good scare occasionally, and it's a really simple trailer. That is probably the yeah. most effective trailer we've seen today. Yeah. Um, for a film that normally would be probably low down on the films we've seen that I'd want to watch, but it's very well put together. It, it just again, just based on it, I I'm intrigued. To, wow, if if. It, because usually they'll, they'll put all of these bells and whistles in trailers like this to just to draw an audience, but because it's so grounded and it relies, it doesn't try to force the audience. Hey, this is scary. It just you. It 
it's a, it's suggested that it's scary just by the look expression and, and that's the, the way it's, it's all suggestion and it's done it perfectly it is it is this you know should be used in in trailer making classes for yeah. it is i mean it's short so it's really more of a teaser but it is a very effective teaser and i'm glad that it didn't kind of go so well and then at the end just kind of go and have the thing yeah. jump out of it. Yeah. <laughs> then I would have gone, oh, it, it did so well, and then on the last hurdle it screwed up. And it didn't do that, and yeah. that's really good. It, it's actually more scary. Don't get me wrong, I'm pretty sure the film's going to screw yeah, that it's, up. It's, it's <laughs> showing you the creepy it's thing and all its screwed up CG glory, and you'll go, ah, oh, that's not scary anymore. Can but, you say mama? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's visceral, the set, and some fantastic sound designer, you know. So Yeah, so, so that's, I know you don't like horror films, so... No, it's not that I don't like horror films. Every time, every time there's a horror movie, it's like I know you don't like. It. Look, look, I like horror films. I just don't like contemporary horror films because I grew up on cheesy horror, which is you Freddy get the Kruger. jump, you got the jump scare, but you got the funny ha ha afterwards. You know what I mean? I like I like to laugh and and get my jump scares. You know what I mean? Um, it's just whenever they're like, this is the true story or the latest thing since last week. You know what I mean? That's what I hate. I mean, like, I like I like serious horror as well, but you know when it's you're just getting like churned down the same shit. Eventually, you just kind of after a while, you just kind of switch off, and that's what I don't like about contemporary horror movies. But I do hear this Annabelle and the Conjuring series are fa- well. The Conjuring at least is the, the Conjuring's be good, amazing. Yeah, and, uh, Annabelle isn't. And and Annabelle yeah. isn't though. No? Okay, no, no. but um, you know, I I've heard James Wan has done amazing stuff with the Conjuring. I can't wait to see what he does with Aquaman. Um, you know, but that aside, back on subject, the hand of this trailer, Greg's absolutely right. They managed to saw, sell the whole film in one scene. And not even a scene like almost a camera shot, almost a full camera shot. And they It's like alien when you can't see the alien, you can just hear it. Exactly. Well it's and, back to the it's back to the days of Jaws and stuff that yeah. Jaws wasn't half you know due to the fact that the, the shark was screwed up and stuff like that, it became <laughs> the, the biggest summer blockbuster yeah, of the yeah. time. And no. Yeah, it's, and that's what works. Um, but yeah, I, the doll itself looks reasonable scary. I've seen it, but I haven't seen the original film, and mm. uh, I'm sure the film itself would be fairly lacklustre, but the trailer's awesome, mm. so... On, um, on, on a side note, you guys ever hear about the story about what happened when um, the reviewers went to go see the um, test screenings for Annabelle? Right. Well, they held it at a place like wherever a festival or whatever, and whichever reviewer went, they had details of the reviewer's hotel rooms kind of thing. <laughs> so when they watched the film, the um, marketing company, they actually put a uh, Annabelle doll in their closets. <laughs> That's screwed. That's, <laughs> that, that is... Hats off so to every, that's reviewer that, every reviewer that reviewed Annabelle... They went back to their hotel room, opened the closet, and there would be this free doll for them. I would, I would, I would have killed someone. I would have killed someone. I'm like, I got a feeling. I got a feeling. This is going to be a film that is going to be made up of some good parts and be absolutely terrible. But yeah. I seriously reckon that the marketing team and the sound designer deserve to be doing Oscar fare. They, yeah. they deserve to be doing better things. And. Uh, and they probably will as well. They'll they'll move on to better things. And, <laughs> and not to say it could be a great film, and I'm just yeah. very very cynical. But I mean, it's a, it's a it's a spin off of a horror movie. I mean, who has spin off seriously? A spin off of horror movies. They're, 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 it's, it's funny that you say that because uh, in The Conjuring Two, there's um there's a nun in it, and um it's it's probably the most scariest thing I've seen since um uh who's the the clown in the uh, it's, it. um, it's the, it's yeah, the, Tim Curry, yeah. I yeah. mean, that terrified my generation and every generation that saw it. He's absolutely so. So, this is okay. So, they're doing a spin off, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of, uh, of that uh, nun, but that nun is you'll see her in the background and it you'll, you'll just you'll just see it. It's it's not they don't reference it, you'll just see it, and it's got such piercing eyes, it stays with you way. Once, once you walk out the cinema, once something stays with you like that, that's when you know it's worked. Well, it? I mean, if, the, if it is generally the most you know scary thing in the, the thing, then I suppose it deserves to, well, right, deserve to turn up. Again. That's the thing; it's just a footnote in the film, but they it, it's referenced every now and again in the film, and you just you just see the piercing because it's just a, a picture like that, and it's nun's face, white back background, and 
the more you see it, the it's it's very well done. It's very well I'll done. I'll have to check it out. So. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really well done, and it, it just works at the back of your mind. So, no. Of course, you've opened up another can of worms because um, they're remaking it, and uh, I don't know yeah. if you've seen their Stellan Sarsgaard in it. Yeah, we've seen it. Yeah, and um, it's probably on a previous podcast, but it's uh, I mean that's. That's very, very I'm, precious for me. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I love it. it I'm kind classic. of, I'm kind of got, uh, I don't know, Tim Curry. Tim Curry <laughs> was, was a classic. It, yeah. Tim Curry was absolutely terrified in the original, and then he turned into a giant, really unscary spider at the end, and it was just like, this is just so backwards. <laughs> and now to terrify the kids, I'll turn into a giant rat, because <laughs> they'll kill with fucking earrings. And, uh, yeah. and it was so <laughs> much scarier when it was Tim off. Curry. Yeah, yeah. Everything floats down here. <laughs> okay, so uh, on to the next film, which is the. <laughs> Sorry to finish on this, folks, but uh, I don't know, some people might enjoy this. Fifty Shades Darker. Right. <laughs> um, I'm all out of luck with this one. I didn't see the first one, and I'm not going to see this one either. So it's it's not, the marketing has not worked on me, so. Um, and it's. I, I watched the first one because it was on Netflix or something, and I and I and I watched it to see what the fuss is about. Ah, why not? And, <laughs> uh, and yeah, uh, I mean, I, I struggled to whack one after it. I'll be honest. It was, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was an interesting film. My my issue is is I've not read the books because I don't think they're really marketed to me. But um, I just sit there and watch this and go. Thank God this guy's good looking because otherwise this is basically a terrifying thriller where the guy is a stalker, he's possessive, he's controlling, he's put feminism back about fifty years ago. <laughs> Contracts or none, that is shocking. And I just thought I really want them to remake this shot for shot with someone like Jonah Hill as the main character. Yeah. And yeah. everyone will go, Oh my god, that's terrifying. There's this there's this new movie out with this horrific sex pest. He should be on a list. Seriously. He, he should be put away. But suddenly you put Jason Dorman in it and everyone's going, Oh my god, I oh, wish he was doing oh, oh. Hollywood, if you're listening, that's a fantastic idea. For alternate alternate. Sorry, version. Jonah. <laughs> No, but it is. It's, it's brilliant. I think you'd love it as well. Um, but we want to reboot Fifty Shades of Grey. Jonah says, I'll be Jonah happy Hill. to be a sex pest if I yeah. get to do Dakota Fanning. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> if, if you're... It, or even do, Dakota Fanning. If you do another jump film, uh, put it in one of the jump films as a scene. Just do it. Jonah, you've got to do it. Yeah. I mean... Um, yeah, I mean, like, I'm sure this trailer would probably hit the demographic that it's aimed at. That unfortunately isn't me. I mean, like, I don't get it. I mean, like, it you know what? Cool. This is ju this is just a movie that's just churned out because the series of novels are making mega bucks. Okay, that's literally all it is. I mean, like, the director they got they got James Foley. He um, he did a movie called Perfect Strangers, which is an average kind of movie. He's also famous for directing episodes of Hannibal and House of Cards, which are two excellent TV shows. Um, you know, obviously, he's getting some director credits there to try and do something popular to hopefully do something that he probably wants to do because his past two outings haven't really made the box office, like, go set a light. Yeah. But, I mean, um, you know, it's written by the woman that wrote the novels and her husband, and that fucking scares me because her quality of writing is fucking disgusting awful. and awful. <laughs> so, obviously, you know what? They're not even trying with this franchise. I mean, like, you know what? If you want to make a Fifty Shades of Grey movie from the book, they should have just tried to make a decent movie. Well, you know what I mean? I, like, in fairness, I, yeah. I've, 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 I'm probably the only person who's seen the actual, the original film, and it's not a bad film. It's just a terrifying premise. The fact that right. this... The, I, maybe the bits that they've left out in the book, because obviously the book is, is, is too large to turn yeah. every single scene to the film... But my understanding is just the premise is terrifying because this guy is horrifically controlling and yeah. sex pesty and he stalks her, he's controlling, he doesn't like her being with other men. And normally this is this is an injunction waiting to happen. This is what divorce cases are all based on. And uh, so the, the original film wasn't bad. The acting's not shocking, you know. It's yeah. just the whole premise terrifies me and the, the, the second one of the same premise is just terrifying. And if women find this attractive and... This is their fantasy. Then then I'm right around the corner. Then <laughs> <laughs> Adrian is waiting for you. If you can put your name on a postcard and send them into Zedo's podcast, and <laughs> we'll, we'll forward it on to Adrian. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I just, 
I think, you know, obviously it's going to do well based on that. Oh, what's interesting is is the reuse of Crazy in Love, and again, an alternative mm. slowdown version, but by a different artist, someone called Miguel I've never heard of. But but it's, um, but yeah, they're reusing that song, which is interesting, because that was the mm. one of the hooks to the first trailer, and now they're doing another slowdown version. I'd be intrigued to see if they carry on the theme for the third one and have a... Have the same song, probably, yeah. and more sex stalking, and <laughs> <laughs> maybe you'll be in this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, on to the news topics and Mad Max, Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> uh, it looks like they're going to be doing a prequel to um, uh, the recent Mad Max film that just came out, which, uh, which will focus on Shelley Storon character Furiosa. And um, uh, I don't know if any one of you guys saw Mad Max here. I've that, seen that, was... that film eight times in the cinema. I have seen it a further 20 times since owning it on Blu-ray. I love this film. This film was probably my best film of last year. It was fucking fantastic. I mean, for fuck's sake, George Miller went from ha from from complete like look. George Miller, yeah, did Mad Max trilogy, fucking fantastic. Then started doing Happy Feet, Babe the Pig, loads of kids films, and then all of a sudden just shown the whole world he has still got it, can still do an eighteen, He's can still not logo, only do yeah. an eighteen. But just go, yo, Michael Bay, like, yo, Ma Michael 15. Bay, what you do, what you do, ain't got shit on me. He just completely blew it away with the action photography, with the cinematography, from the stunts to the effects. That fucking film's a fucking visual masterpiece, okay? It's fucking fantastic. I fucking yeah, love this is why this show's on <laughs> No, but seriously, seriously, <laughs> is George Miller directing this? I don't know. But you know what? Charlie Theron stood her own in this movie. All right, you know what? That movie, that movie's her movie. To be quite honest, more than it ever was Mad Max's. But you know what? It was such a great movie. I buy this. I want to see more of that world. Totally want to see more Charlie Theron. Definitely in anything. And yeah, if you call her oh, that, right. she'll probably kill you. She probably would, and I probably <laughs> what a way to go, eh? <laughs> well, I thought the film was shit. What? No, no, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to try. I had to see your face. What the fuck? No, it was man. awesome. But, <laughs> but for a moment, you had a shit. You were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a, what? <laughs> that would have been an interesting debate. Yeah. It is, my thing is, is I think they've done a prequel for her character, um, um, in in the TV format, and I swear. If 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 mm. if you're one of the people who hasn't seen this, go and see it immediately. But I swear, Eleven from Stranger Thing grows into her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen all of it yet. Oh, but, um, oh, that is so happening. Uh, I, 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 I'm enjoying it. Um, Stranger Things at the moment. It's just it's a very good show. Um, but yeah, I, I'm. If he's if he's doing more Mad Max, I'm I'm down for it. I I, I love Mad. I didn't. I was very apprehensive about what. Mad Max, it's like 20 years, not even longer than that. Yeah, and plus uh, it's the first one without Gibson. I mean, like, you know Yeah, what? well, well yeah, reason. of course. <laughs> I mean, look, this, that, I mean, Fury Road was 10 years in the making. You know what I mean? They started it as a fresh sequel with Mel Gibson in there. And then obviously he did what he did, and then it was... That'd be an interesting know. take on it, though. Mad Max Fury phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man. God! But I, I, I uh, to be honest, I would have watched it with uh, Gibson yeah, regardless, same. but because but he felt, screwed himself up so much, yeah. was, uh, they had to recast. And to yeah. be honest, I mean, like I really felt that um, mm. what's his name, um, Tom, Hardy. Tom, Hardy. Tom Hardy did a fantastic job. You know what I mean? And Tom Hardy's exceptional in everything. Yeah, he does. exactly. Fairness, he's so good, um, even when he's playing Bane with the very strange. I, voice I really stuff. like. That. I still like it. It's, it's, I, he can do no wrong in my eyes. I, I really do like him. Mm. Yeah. Um, no, I'm excited about it. Um, I, th I think it's such a great world, and what they did with, with very going back to the idea of practical effects, very very practical effects, and the CGI yeah. in it was very subtle. It's all to enhance the landscape. Yeah, it, it's it, not uh, to especially that firestorm. That, that yeah, that blew my mind away. Like, wow, what is that? It, it was I'd never seen anything like that before on screen. It, it looked so beautiful in the sense that it was. It, it just it, when you can't tell when something is CG, which it, I mean, I, yeah, I, I didn't know if it was or if it wasn't. I, I 
I had no idea. The before and after comparisons of CG on, on the Mad Max Fury Road were, were amazing because it's yeah. like, and here's a massive trailer flying through the air and here's the car and this and that. And you go, yeah, one of those is CG. And then you look at the before and it's all exactly the same except yeah. they've added a few rocks on the left and a few rocks on the right. And you realise it's more about enhancing the background and yeah. making it more cinematic or more sort of post-apocalyptic. And it's not about adding the cars. And you see a car flying that field. It's, okay, it's, it's a real car. It's a real car. Like a flying car. I think the and, CG kind of really aided that universe and give give it you know it you know what it kind of gave it more of a john ford kind of look to the cinematography with those really long wide angles and stuff that you'd get the stuff that you know that Pan normally, panoramic views uh yeah. yeah the stuff that you'd get on 60 on 70 millimeter the mm. stuff that tarantino was trying to push with the hateful eight and you know what they you know what i just i just want to see more mad max to be honest in mm. that world you know, so buy for me with this film. This is not um, Collider Movie Talk. Well, 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 you know, buy it's a buy. It's Get a it. buy. It's a buy. It's a buy. Uh, I'll buy this yet. for a dollar. Okay, yeah, you can say that. <laughs> say that. I'll buy that for a dollar. No, I, I'm uh, excited about this. I loved Fury Road. I, I didn't see it in the cinema and I kick myself. I've got a big TV and I've seen it in Blue Rain, blah, blah, blah. I wish I'd seen it. That's cinema. really one oh, for. Man, if there's any film, I would say that. It, it was one seeing film, it on, it, seeing at home just doesn't do yeah. injustice. It was definitely it. one film. I like I said, I saw it eight times in the cinema. It was literally whenever I'd get in a conversation with a mate, I'd be like, "Have you seen Fury Road?" And they'll be like, "No." I was like, "Right, we're watching it." I had to, I, it, you know, it just had to be done, man. Had to be no, done. it's it's great. Going back to doing less yeah. with more. I mean, it's just one long chase. It's it's basically a scene. Yeah, one long scene. Long yeah, yeah. yeah. I've done so well. Um, yeah. The character's great, and, and as I said, Tom Hardy's is 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 genius there. Well, that's the that's the thing. If you can put so much drama into just yeah, as you said, it's like a they go here, they go then they go back. <laughs> it's if you you're and you're you're engrossed in what's what's happening, and there's there isn't that much dialogue in the film, so no. it's I don't know how he pulled that off, but it's amazing and. Mm. Um, I hope I hope he can put it off again. I don't know what this next the 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 film will be about, but um, if it's focusing on Furiosa, uh, she was an engaging character in uh, uh, Fury Road, so I can imagine that she'll be as engaging in this film. So yeah. I think it's almost yeah. a shame they haven't done a direct sequel or or something where they've got the two characters together. But maybe that's the whole idea. This is it's reached. They sort of found their paradise or whatever, and they're happy and. Yeah. Like that. I, I kind of think they said all they needed to do with Max and Furiosa in that in that world, but you, I well, think, yeah, that's, yeah that's I think she's saying. like such a prominent character in that movie where she's probably more dominant in that movie than he is at some points. Yeah. And we spend most of his time yeah. as a hood ornament. And yeah, and he, he grunts <laughs> occasionally. Yeah, <laughs> that, that bit when he's on the car, I, re I don't think yeah. that was real. So what the bloody hell am I doing? Here? Yeah. <laughs> That, I love that bit. If I'm going to see a film where the, the, the male talent only grunts, it would be Tom Hardy. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like I have a man crush on him, and I really don't. But <laughs> if I was going to have a man crush on a man, it would be him. He's, no, he's, he's absolutely amazing in it. And, um, and yeah, the cinematography, the action, the lack of really obvious CGI. Yeah. All it's, good. It's really good. If they, if they do that, bring up more, and, and it's George Miller again, then yeah, he should be amazing. Mm. Okay, so um, on from that to uh, definite, and uh, this is a, a kind of a personal one for me uh, because I love the the series so much. Um, uh, if no one knows what definite is, definite is a, a Japanese anime um, uh, that is about a a notebook. You write someone's name down in this notebook, they die, and you um, it's not that they just die. You can write the way that they die. You can write the time that they die. It's it's a superb premise and uh, you give this book to a particular human being say donald trump wow all <laughs> you're, the you're, would be dead yeah you, you, you're in trouble <laughs> I, i'll be dead you'd be dead so. <laughs> in fairness donald trump would just start writing sort of vaguely ethnic sounding names <laughs> he would literally go uh jesus yes. Noega, they, i'm just hoping someone will die yeah, um, yeah it's it's just by that alone, I think it's an intriguing premise, and um, just the way the 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 anime plays out, it it goes into politics as well, and um, hence why I think it would uh, translate well into um, uh, for Western audience. 
but the thing the thing about this uh what the director is saying uh, the director is uh adam wingard uh i'm i'm not sure what he's directed in the past but um he's the way he talks about it is not what death note is about he says it's going to be violent it's going to have a lot of adult themes and death note has a few adult themes but it's not supposed to be violent particularly violent i mean there are people that have violent deaths in it but a lot of his a lot of it is suggestion the through the whole anime you see maybe see about two or three deaths that are quite violent and um i <coughs> thought i thought they would have translated that into this a little bit better but the way he's talking yeah man it's gonna be violent we're gonna have this and people are gonna see you're gonna see it's, it's almost like he's talking about one of those overly grotesque horror films and it's definitely is not that I it's, don't know the original anime. I'm, yeah. I'm not a huge anime. Well, I, anime is one of these things I really want to become a fan of if I just haven't found the time. But, oh, I mean... Um, but it's... it's um, No, I, I don't know, but it sounds like something that should be handled with subtlety. And it's like, this guy yeah. has the subtlety of a brick, yeah. so... Okay. Okay. I'll just say, it seems to me that if he, if he was to do an anime film, live action, he should do Legend of the Overfiend instead of Death Note. Oh, wow, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that would get past any senses of it. So if you don't know what a legend of everything is, it's 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 what it's what you would know as hentai um, in the in the normal wow. world. It's it's not as bad as hentai, but it's it um, it was one of the, uh, when manga entertainment was a uh, um, j uh, just started in this country. Um, it was back in the nineties, and so uh, they released like Akira, they released uh, uh, Fist of the North Star, and the, one of the films was um, Legend, legend of, of the Overthing. And Legend of the Overfiend was there's dicks and balls everywhere and vaginas. It's vaginas coming out of chests and out of heads and tentacles, tentacles going into different orifices. orifices yeah. <laughs> well, they can still do this. They can still do this. <laughs> so we, Donald we... Trump said they go, Hillary Clinton, tentacle rape. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. That, that's, that's, uh, don't give him ideas. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Um, that's... I'll go into debt, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, that, that, yeah. I, again, it's another case of, like, you know, I think anime is that next thing from comic book movies and video game movies that Hollywood are looking to... Destroy. De well, not destroy, but, like, like, as an avenue to go down and adapt... Um, and they currently do with Ghost in the Shell. That's they right, are yeah, currently yeah. do... I think well, if Ghost in the Shell hits big, you know... 100% Death Note is going to be the next one for that character. Well, that, well, this is going to Netflix now, so it's... Oh, okay, so it's a TV series. I think No, that, it's a film. Oh, was it a film? Yeah, but okay. if, it, if it does as well as Crouching Tiger, then th there's no hope for it. Uh, but, <laughs> the biggest question is, 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 is this going to be an argument about whitewashing? Are they going to... Oh, yeah, yeah. Asian people? No, no, it? it's not going to be Asian. It's all going to be whitewashed. But the, well, the, 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 the show's going to be Scott Johansson. Yeah. Yeah, but, okay, my, my argument with that is that... Um, the the um the character Major Kusanagi, she's um that This is Ghost in the Shell people, if yeah. you get um the, the reason why it's called Ghost in the Shell is because she can change her body. Her brain remains the same because that's what it is. Uh, she's putting her brain in another shell. And so the argument with that is that and even the creator says that he's got no problem with her being white, black or wh whatever colour because the shell is only representation of what other people see her to be and so if she was black he wouldn't mind if she was um white she doesn't mind if she was japanese he doesn't mind if chinese she doesn't mind sorry <laughs> i said make it angela bassett <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing he, she she still could be angela bassett because um if you're not familiar with the show uh, or the film um she she body swaps a lot and um it's i think it's just the original body was a Japanese girl. Mm, right. When she was eleven, yeah, that she, but that, she but was then, original. Yeah, she she's had girl. different. Um, Ever since then, yeah, her different body's bodies every since. Been so you know, her being Charlotte Johansson shouldn't really matter to the grand scheme of things. Um, yeah, there is that ever go, you know, the ever, whitewashing. Yeah, thing. the whitewashing thing. But with Ghost in the Shell, they've managed to creatively found a way to 
make it work for them. Well, it's just, I guess, fans of the anime and it being an anime, people being a lot more vocal about it. Had this have been Akira, and oh, that, that, that would be that. that would be that would be there would be an uproar, or like Dragon Ball Evolution that came before <laughs> it. Did I they mean, make like, a, there was yeah. a, what, the white kid playing one of the main? Yeah, players. there was. And that was, you know, this is Goku, man. That's like, that's like making Superman like, like Indian, you know, like people go nuts. I haven't Bollywood surely tried that. Oh yeah, they, they have. They, they, have. Gravity, so. they have. He also had crazy, more powers than the Christopher Reeves one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Disco uh, dance of power. I'm going to dodge bullets. I mean, um, it's kind of uh, fantastic dance now, which is wasted in the medium of podcasts. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Vis- visually, it was stunning for us. Yes. Uh, but yeah, you, that's well, something that I you don't guys would know. Have. No, no, let's, let's give them a, a, a good image. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, again, going, just going back to Death Note, um, in, in regards of anime adaptations, I, I, don't, I think this is going to go in the toilet for me, but um, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on this. But yeah, uh, there'll be more, more, I'll have more news on this as as a trailer or more images uh, uh, are available. Okay, on to Star Wars Rogue One. And um, it seems that uh, the... Uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Composer. The composer has been replaced. Uh, who was the composer beforehand? The Godzilla guy. Yeah, the Godzilla guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's his official that's, name. That's, that's his official well. name. Has been replaced by uh, Michael Giacchino, um, who you'll know for... Uh, um, scoring Mission Impossible and uh, The Incredibles and uh, a couple of more things. <laughs> but um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is a plus for Giacchino because uh, he's the he's the closest that sounds to John he's, he's he's the closest uh, comparison to John Williams. Before I would have said Don Davis because Don Davis did a uh, a version of Jurassic Park was indistinguishable. It was uh, yeah indistinguishable from what John Williams did and. If he was still making music today, I would have said Don Davis all the way. Don Davis did the Matrix uh, films. I tell you, uh, he's even more distinguishable from John Williams. Who? John Williams. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why is this? Why is this the only? I mean, admittedly, yes, it's it's a spin off to an extent and what have you. But why is this the only thing other than the Ewok movies and <laughs> Holiday Special that isn't scored by John Williams? I mean, because this... John Williams has stated he's only going to do the, do the episodes. episodes. He's he's getting on a bit now, and he's practically retired. He's exclusive only to Steven Spielberg, and even then, he hasn't done a couple of Spielberg's latest films. Even he's missed. That's because he was working in Star Wars. When yeah, Spielberg that's was right. Doing that's film. right. So Spielberg has had, had to use other composers for the first time in his career. Spielberg has um, really got so, the best composer. Yeah, he does. He amazing. does. And um, you know, he has stated he's only going to do the um, episodes as long as he's alive. He will do the episodes. But the spin-offs can use his themes, but he will not be doing the spin-offs. Unless Kathleen Kennedy and Disney want to pay like super super money to keep the old boy going. But I don't think it's you know, a, I mean at the end of the day he's probably got more money than he can eat. Oh yeah, spend. of course. And so, unless it's gonna prolong his life, it's not gonna help him much. Yeah, right? I mean I mean, you know, the guy they originally had, they had um Alexandra Desplat, who did Godzilla, he's also done the King's Speech, Argo, and basically he's Gareth Edwards' go-to guy, because he worked on Monsters as well as Godzilla, which is why he got the job in the first place. I mean, like, you know, who they've got now, um, you know, he's the perfect fit, I think. I like. Did he do Super 8? I, I think don't he know. Did, I think he I did really do Super know. 8. Someone just double check. I mean, I remember but, all these movies, but I don't remember. I mean, the incredible score. I remember being. Oh, incredible. if if it's but, JJ, yeah, then he it probably was him. Giacchino always uses um, uh, JJ Abrams always uses Giacchino. Yeah, well, it was Super Eight, and yeah, the thing is, Super Eight sounded like a Spielberg movie. His tone, you know, the 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 score that he used in that movie, you know, sounded like a John Williams kind of thing. So, you know. I, I can't remember the music personally, yeah. but then I remember it not being jarring, and I remember the Super 8 being very, very good. And yeah, we're yeah. going to come to music and films yeah, later so, on. Then, so uh, I, on, think, I think it's the perfect choice. I mean, they picked the right guy. I felt his work on Super 8 showed that he could pull off a Johnny Williams. 
sounding kind of score. Um, I think they should have just know. used Danny Elfman because he'll always sing <laughs> just like Danny Elfman. <laughs> His scores will always sound like that. <laughs> and if it's not a Tim Burton thing, it's not going to fit. But it would be hilarious, a Rogue One. Yeah, but I, 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 I mean, saying that with Danny Elfman, Danny Elfman made the last relevant sounding Spider-Man film. Uh, I remember the theme to the, the uh, original Spider-Man films. And uh, yeah. uh, that's thanks to um, Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman. And I think that's been lost, but I will get onto that because that's what I've got down yeah. the line: music scores and film. Um, but um, yeah, with I, I, Giacchino's great for it. Yeah. Um, he's he's grown and grown and grown in terms of uh, uh, his his musical uh, prowess in terms of making you feel something. Uh, so yeah, and he did he did a great job of Mission um, Impossible Three and Four, and uh, he he made he. He, he got what I loved about what he did with those ones was that he brought more of the original TV shows so that's what um, I was about to say, themes yeah. into the movies. And that's something Danny Elfman, who did the first one, didn't do. Like it was no, he original, did. It was very subtly. Yeah. Subtly, but I mean like when free came in when free came in you had that do 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 you know that kind of stuff and i was like oh yeah and it's sort of from the 60s and the 80s yeah yeah i know but like you know it just reminded me of the 60s show and like having that in the tom cruise movie it just kind of made it more authentic that it was mission impossible you know um but yeah anyway yeah okay so uh any more insights into rogue one no no, no, okay. um, I'm okay. looking forward wait. to it as a film. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Darth Vader's yeah. going to be awesome in it, hopefully. Uh, yeah. It, yeah I, look, it, it, as far as I can see, it, I don't. They, they've got it sewed up. I think they know what they're doing with it. Okay, so um, on to the next topic. And that is uh, something I've been waiting to pound in the ground for ages. Um, the Resident Evil films. Uh, still going on. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're yeah. doing another one, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. they are. And oh, uh, oh. at this point, this is my point. Are these films even relevant anymore? Because one, it's deviated from the game storyline so much. Even the game storyline has deviated from what the game storyline is. Yeah. It's something else now. Resident Evil Seven isn't even about. Um, from Resident Evil Four onwards, in the game, in the game world, it okay. It's not about the T virus. It's about something else. Uh, and What's it I, about? I've not played a game since Four. Four was like. Well, no, no. But this is what I mean. Yeah. It's it's not really about. The right. T virus anymore. It's, okay. it's about. I mean, Umbrella still in, is still involved. I've not played six because um, I refuse to. And um, it's um, seven. I'm very intrigued because it, it's it's grounded. But this is about the films. Mila Jovovich is still Alice, Alice, and Alice isn't in the games. And the director goes, "Oh, do you know what? I'm going to ignore this source material, and I'm going to just make my own thing and put the, the name on it." And put and, his wife in there. Yeah, <laughs> and to me, it's. What is this? Who the fuck is Alice? This is flogging a dead horse. I mean, it it's one of those sad that things film. that yeah, I think Red and Evil, like the Underworld thing, it has its followers and it has. They know that it's a safe bet. They can probably churn them out for fairly cheap in the scheme of things. Yeah. Um, they don't have to do anything innovative and groundbreaking. They literally just have to put the face and the name. Here. Everyone loves Mila of it, and they'll put her in there. And the same people go, it won't break records, but it will be guaranteed. Yeah, guaranteed. it will make its money yeah. back. And yes. and that is that is that is sadly one of the realities of, of modern filmmaking and it is disgusting and it is it is films made in in a corporate boardroom rather than made by, you know, authors mm. and, and fantastic directors. But but you know, yeah. You have to have that. You have to have the rough with this movie. If it keeps the uh, coffers alight in the studio, then they might be able to green it something a little bit more sort of, um, you know, sort of alternative and stuff like that. Because there's another Resident Evil thing topping up the coffers. But yeah, God, it sounds terrible. It sounds yeah, like flogging a dead horse. Yeah, and years after it died. It says the final chapter, and <laughs> oh. and usually what when is it? <laughs> usually when, I mean um, the last Underworld film was supposed to be the last Underworld, and now there's another one. And so, like, what? I thought that last one was the last one. And uh, yeah, it was another one. And um, I, even with the games now, it's starting to separate itself completely from from this franchise. It's um, it's called Biohazard now, Resident Evil Biohazard, and so if uh, Resident Evil Seven Biohazard. And so that completely separates it from uh, these Resident Evil films. Cause they're just so different now. And uh, whoever's um, doing the games at, uh, for Capcom now, um, um, there's a, well, we don't want it to be. We don't. We want nothing to do with what's going on over there. So let's 
move away from that. I mean, maybe maybe that isn't even their focus, but... Have you seen the poster to this film? Yes. Why does it look like another installment of The Hunger Games? It, it, it doesn't matter. It's like The Hunger Games. Oh my God, it really does. It really does look like... I looked at that, I was like, is that The they, Hunger Games? They have stolen the they've Catch stolen. and Fire um, poster blatantly. Yeah, they've it. basically taken the Catch and... You know, the logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made it exactly like The Hunger Games put the font, the final chapter, instead of The Hunger Games, in the exact same <laughs> font, and put Mila Jolovich instead of, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Jessica, <laughs> Jessica uh, Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. I mean, when there ever been wow. a successful horror movie um, film adaptation anyway, the Resident Evil has come closest, and that's embarrassing if that's the case. That, yeah, it is. Um, yeah. It's... it's um, if you think back through the canon, I mean, Doom was just awful. Was God, a bad film. Yeah. There's hmm? the, that's the Rock. Doom. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. There was um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Silent Hill, which is famous for I think being the only film that Sean Bean didn't die in, I believe. And yeah, that's true. <laughs> and that was a great movie. <laughs> oh my um, God. I like that. Film. Sean, Bean, Sean Bean, um, he didn't. He's he's alive. He's spoilers, alive. spoilers. I had the um, I had the honor of um, doing an interview with uh, Alice Creek, who was in that and also played the ball queen in First Contact. So, oh wow, amazing okay. British actress. We interviewed her for the show. Really terrible. We didn't actually end up using the, the interview because we had uh, we had only five minutes or segment, and she the way she speaks was almost like in port in computer, where she's like like. Oh yes, when I did this, and literally a sentence will take twenty minutes, but you will listen. <laughs> She's amazing. But anyway, but she was in that, and she was okay with that. She, she said she played the games briefly, and and didn't really like him. It's not her thing. Literally, the director put a console and the game in her trailer as, as, oh, as stuff like that. The trailer went, yeah, I did like that. She said I played it for about an hour. I went, no, um, it's, it's not real. That's a, that's the thing. If you're not into that culture as well, it's. It's like trying to, hey, here's this block. Try and fit it into this triangle. It's not going to work. But then Especially. it turned out that she wasn't actually in the game anyway. She was oh. a new character, so it didn't make sense. But um, Yes, I know who she was in that film now. I just, I just, she was at the end. She was the, long hair, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but she was, she was awesome in it. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I did, as I said, I had this amazing interview with her, but I didn't want to tell her that the film sucked because <laughs> that's just rude. You don't tell a British institution that. But... Um, but it, it, that's the case. Um, I can't think of. I can't think. I, I'll go as far as I can't think of a good video game adaptation, let alone horror video game adaptation. Yeah. Street Fighter wasn't exactly great. <laughs> <Mortal Kombat. laughs> I'm not. I'll trump you that. You know what? I have a soft spot for Mortal Kombat, the original. The original was. Then some of then some of the sequels had some of the worst CGI. Oh yeah, definitely. In ever. It's well, just well, the first Z one's movie. Dated. Shocking. Was who was, remember uh, as Raiden? Christopher well, Lambert. Lambert. It was in the first one. Yeah, the first one. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not lying. With with Resident Evil, when I seen like the first two movies, I thought the bad guys looked like they should be in Power Rangers. That's how bad they looked. Well, that, they, were, they weren't scared yeah. at all. They just looked like I don't know, like a uh, al amalgamation of. I don't know. I know. It's there was a there was a Spanish film that came out. Um, Wreck. If, yes, and that did Resident Evil better than Resident Evil. In, in, in the sense, of, did you ever see? Did you ever see I've, Rack? I've not seen that one. So, check so out. Rack is a Fantastic. Spanish one. They've got the whole camera thing uh, where it's from the. Oh, I'm Rack is in a, a recorder. Are we yes, that's right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I've, I've, no, I haven't seen it, but I've heard very good things it's about very it. Very good, so. especially the second one. Oh yeah. my god, the second one's so deep. It's 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 the I'll, both I'll Rack one and two are very good films. Um, three and four suggestible, but um, uh, that's. The way, even the, the directors that they were inspired by, they play Resident Evil. That's what they wanted to do. They went and made they made a better Resident Evil film than than the actual studio. I think and the thing with film adaptations of of video games is just like um, just like uh, anime and stuff like that. These characters are so integrated in the people who who play them and have got such a good idea that when you cast them, the cast is always going to come under scrutiny. I mean, if you made an Uncharted film and you said this person's going to be Nathan Drake if it's the slightly if, unless it was the most amazing casting ever everyone's going to go mental yeah. and and that's the problem it, it's, it's I mean they don't help themselves by putting Kylie as whatever in this and yeah. and and, uh, and, Tamara, and and Christopher Lambert as much as he was good back in the day I mean they always put him in strange roles he's like let's take a, a, a French Canadian and let's let's make him a, 
a, a sort of a Chinese man and what have you. Yeah. This was almost as funny as when they said, let's make it a Scottish person, and then we'll have an actual Scottish <laughs> person, but he'll be playing an Egyptian Spaniard. And it's like, fuck's sake, people! <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, these there's some casting directors out there need but to learn. You have to get to Sean Connery, no matter what role he was yep. in, no matter yeah. what nationality he was meant to be, fuck it, I'm going to be Scottish. Yeah, <laughs> you I'm don't for like it, it. fuck I'm you. I'm for it, top four minutes. Duh! Really? Oh, he's anyone can get away with that. I am a Russian shovelrine commander, yeah, yes. You did that really good. I speak for like this, but occasionally I'll go bar or net, and then you're by completely. <laughs> yeah, that, that's oh, exactly what Sean Curry was. That's exactly what Sean Curry was. In every form, it. Yeah, well, I'm, this is me. <laughs> you I love that they wrote it into the script most of the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's American, but he spent most of his life in Scotland, Scotland or something. <laughs> Even in the Untouchables, he didn't, he didn't make an effort to do a Chicago uh, accent. Yeah. Like, no, uh, yeah, whatever. This was <laughs> my Chicago <laughs> accent. But yeah, um, but yeah no. Resident Evil films, hate them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, not but, excited. I've seen the first one. Yeah. That's it. I walked out of the second film. With, uh, I went to watch it with uh, Sacha, and um, it it was one of those things where okay, all right, that's bad. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. <laughs> My God, how what? Okay, well, I'm they, done. They lost. Wasn't there a love story between her and the nemesis monster? What? That's where I it don't lost, know. That's where it lost me. I was like, what? Okay, wow. I'm out. You turned around like you're going. Where's Joe gone? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to stop making video game adaptations unless well, you're going to do it right. And and but then I suppose they're trying to do it right. But it's well, just the same thing. Else. It's the same thing with any adaptation. I mean, I look at comic book movies. I mean, like for years, comic book movies. Well, they still get them wrong now, but it it took a really long time. And th- look at the ones that are good. They're usually done by directors that get the source material, or they're done by Marvel. Who so make the comics? It. It's done by it. It's just Marvel. Or, or, or that's it. I mean, like, do you know what I mean? It all depends on the talent behind behind the IP, and that's not going to change no matter what the um, source material is, whether it's video games, comic book movies, or anime. So, you know what I mean? Like, I'll just wait till they reboot this franchise again. Um, for Resident Evil thing, oh. but in terms of video game movies, it's still a young kind of, um, it's still a young kind of thing that Hollywood's only just scratched the surface of because there haven't been that many of these adaptations and it's still trial and error for them. What you got to understand is a generation, the generation of gamers that grew up on these games are not film directors yet and it's still a wait and see situation. I'll, I'll back to differ. Edgar Wright. Yeah, Edgar Wright, but is he interested in doing that? I'm apparently? sure he was at one point. Maybe. He, he makes references to it in um Oh the, in um Shaun of Scott, the Dead. Yeah and Scott Pilgrim. I, I uh, just don't think anyway. I just don't think that it, if it, rebooting would be the complete wrong way to go because who cares about the Resident Evil games? I mean it's Resident Evil Seven and you know it's not mm. like you, you could make a Call of Duty game now and people would still be excited. Oh, you know, um game or, or, or movie maybe mm. you might get some excitement. The Resident <laughs> Evil's kind of most people haven't played it until many editions of in the past. I'd say, I'd say four, when the original the, the original creator um Sinji Mikami. Sinji Mikami, he when he did four, he went out of his way to I need to make this different from the first game I made. And he did that. He did that with flying colours. That's my favourite Resident Evil game. Ever when he left the company, everyone just imita oh, you need to imitate what he did but change it a little bit. And that's literally what they've been doing. Um, this newer one, Seven, to me is them going back to what the roots of what the game was, but in a slightly different way. I'm fascinated to see what it's like. Um, but we, I'm going on to uh, games. talking about games. Yeah. Well, I mean that's my special. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure now. Now we are talking. <laughs> no, we're my territory. <laughs> on, on an offshoot, just to wrap up what you were saying just there, who, who have Capcom got for the game? Um, so, do you know the guy, um, do you know when P.T. was, was made? Oh, the, uh, yeah, P.T., the uh, Silent Hill game, so, yeah. So, when the, that whole thing with Kojima and Konami went 
on the, uh, you, should, yeah. you probably know about well, this. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so let's just say hypothetically that one of us in the room decided on his national television show to do, <laughs> to do a review of the PT Project while simultaneously doing a Blair Witch parody for, um, for, uh, for the show in the Halloween episode in... In, in in particular, knowing that in the future Silent Hill, especially with people like Norman Reedus and stuff attached to it, was going to be massive, um, only to find that this now, okay, which is now available on Amazon, people, is now completely irrelevant because the game doesn't <laughs> fucking exist, and they've even been dickish enough to remove the PT project from from the thing. So yeah, unless no. you download on your thing and you keep it, um, you can't it's, even play it anymore. Yeah, and, no, um, that's such a shame. So so yes, yeah, so um, so as long as someone didn't spend us money and time making a very clever parody of something that never came to anything because of internal politics of the fucking thing, then that's all right then. So that's just as a hypothetical there. So is it, when Kojima Productions broke up, um, uh, some people went to Cap, some of those guys went to Capcom, and that, the reason why it is, it looks the way it does is because... They're uh, trying so to recreate what they did on PC. No, not exactly. Yeah. It's just got that same vibe. Right, okay. And um, it's, it's not, again, it's not Kojima, so it's it's it's, it's just the essence of that. Yeah. And there's another one called Alison Road, I think, that is... Is it Alison Road? There's like a... There's a, another guy that started to build this game, which was because he knew that PT was going... That went under, and he's just started making this game. He, he, he started a... Um, uh, what's that? Kickstarter. Kickstarter yeah. to yeah. to help make the game. That that look, I think it's Alison Road. Um, that looks, it looks exactly like PT essentially. Mm. But anyway, um, yeah, that's back to that's movie stuff. I mean. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So on right. from Resident Evil, which we took too much time on, to Stanley. They're making a film about Stanley's uh, sort of a biopic type film, but. Stan, Stan Lee's a fictional character in his own world, in the, in the sense that he's he's not Stan Lee. He's Stan Lee, as in the Stan Lee that he's a, he's like a secret agent or something. I don't know. So they're making, they're doing a movie where he's basically, even though he's Stan Lee, he's like a, an action hero. Yeah, there you go. Like he's Stan Lee. It's like a fictional version of Stan Lee. So if, me, they, um, if they don't have the opportunity to have every single Avenger and Marvel character cameo. In the Stanley thing, <laughs> just for the shits and giggles of him cameoing in every single Marvel franchise ever, hmm. um, then they're missing a, a, a thing there. But uh, I think that's what they'll do. though. They, they'll have to shoehorn on. Oh, that's where he got the name for Spider-Man or um, yeah. the Hulk. Hey, that girl's hulking up. Hey. <laughs> but the, I'm slightly concerned about this because if they do do that it'll be funny but then you'll sit there and go oh, but that's really lame and the, and the reality yeah. behind it I, 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 I didn't realise I, I knew about the Stanley Project but um, I thought it was going to be a, a genuine straight up oh biopic, biopic. Okay, yeah, the no, fact it's... that it's not it's actually disappointed me it's <laughs> oh, no, like, sorry, I don't man. want to see some sort of hero movie with Stan Lee Stan Lee is the creator of the heroes I want to see Stan Lee's heroes I'll, I'll buy it if Stan lame. plays himself <laughs> Just he's ninety three years old. There's All right, no then way. Brian Cranston then. <laughs> I can see Brian Cranston as it, but I just yeah. no, I just yeah, no, you, I've just I've literally I've I didn't realize that. I just, just sort of my oh. face has just got oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> that sucks what? a bit now. That just sounds really lame. Well, I don't, do you know what it it could it could be one of those stories where it could start off with Stanley talking about himself and then it goes into it his mind where he's whatever he is and he, he turns into Brian Cranston and um, if, it's, if it's done in the sort of like being Jim Malkovich sort of way or or done you know by someone talented like Edgar Wright who could make it funny and stuff like that then maybe but mm -hmm. I just see it as just a really lame idea and I, I, I'm, I'm a Marvel fanboy I love the Marvel movies I grew up the Marvel comics um, and I would just love to have seen a straight biopic of him done well you know um and you know most people go oh that'd be boring boring but a biopic doesn't have to be i mean cross i mean I've, I've spoke to you off but but sort of you know people like aaron sorkin if he was writing the dialogue of something you know steve jobs is four scenes basically and he's absolutely amazing and and you know someone who could write some hefty dialogue it could be good or make it a comedy but make it straight make it make it a thing of where these ideas came from or well, actually do a biopic do a biopic <laughs> yeah. which is you know which I thought it was until about 10 yeah, seconds yeah. ago <laughs> massively deflated the idea it just sounds lame I just yeah I, I, I guess some people have had some mixed opinion because uh, well, my, my friend told me about this and I said really dude okay they're doing a the biopic 
And he said, it's about Stan Lee. I said, yeah, okay, so, so it's about Stan Lee. No, no, it's about Stan Lee as this guy, Stan Lee. <laughs> so I, and I didn't understand what he was saying. And uh, now that I've read up on it, oh, that's what he means. <laughs> okay, so I, I was kind of like you in the sense that, oh, that's weird. Um, and the more I heard about it, the more, I thought, oh, it, if they're doing it in a meta kind of way, then it could it could be interesting, but... The, 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 it's the idea that they're going to rewrite how these things came about. As you said, that if they see a, a girl and go, you know, a hulking and go, oh, hulking, 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 hulk, hulk, hulk. Yeah, and yeah. that's where it comes on from some stupid scene. And, and, and I'm slightly then concerned that some dumb, less Marvel fanboy people will go... This is, I've seen it in the biopic, this is how he got the inspiration. No, 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 he fucking didn't! You dumb up! So I, uh, I, just, I mean, maybe uh, maybe it was too blinkered, it was too, too small a demographic, a genuine straight biopic. But mm-hmm. Stanley is, is, is a legend in his own right. But I just imagine this pitch meeting, the guy going, We want to do a Stanley biopic. The guy's a legend, and they went, Yeah, legend. Legends of Tomorrow, some sort of legend. Fires, capes, this and that. Make him a superhero. And the guy just left going, No, okay. Capes. Well, the bad news, the good news is we've got the film greenlit. The bad news is it's now a superhero movie with Stan Lee. And the rest of the production cast going, What the fuck? It's what we got, guys. Have you, you either do it or we don't. Have you guys ever seen the uh, short film George Lucas and Love? No. Okay, well, it sounds very much like George Lucas and Love. It's literally a short film about how George Lucas came up with inspiration for Star Wars. Quite literally, so it's set in the seventies. There's like a, there's this guy that like bullies him called Chewy. Um, there's you know, there's this dog called Indiana, um, which is a true thing because he had a dog called Indiana. Yeah. Right? Who's yeah, um, and like it's literally like his life, like an exaggerated version of what his life was like in the seventies and stuff, with all these little stuff which you'd be like, oh okay. Yeah. He had like these housemates called Han and Leia. Han was a German guy. Leia was a was a college slut. Um, it was wow. like it was like really. It was quite literally. It was quite literally like his inspiration for Star Wars. So I kind of see this maybe as a comedy version like that, but as a Stanley movie. But I don't know, man. Like, I'm not, like I, you, I might be able to enjoy it. I mean, yeah, it's sort of slightly calming my opinion now. Yeah. But it I, just depends if, on how they do it, I guess. If it's funny, if if, if you know, if it if it gets more people interested in Stanley and Marvel and stuff, like that, it's not a bad thing. So I might be interested. I mean, in the same way that, as well as being a Marvel fanboy, I love Batman. He's probably my favorite superhero of all time. But I'm yet only Batman, mm. Superman's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't get me ranting, but um, in that sense, that I so I love the Batman things. I haven't seen the new ones because Superman's in them and make me angry. Um, um, but I, I love Batman, and I watch Gotham, and the whole idea that it's actually related to the Batman universe is ridiculous because the fact that he knew everyone as friends, and, yeah, and, and, hey, and, uh, is ludicrous. And but I can enjoy it. It's it's like the Muppet Bay. It's like this weird sort of, <laughs> <laughs> sort of really oh my god, that's it's, such a brilliant. <laughs> Comparison. Good analogy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and I just, and I watch it like that, and I just have to take a massive step back of actual, you know, believing this is, is the case, and I won't. It's, it's almost like an alternate universe, which obviously comic books do all the time. So yeah. maybe if, if, if it's done in a weird, this is a Stanley alternate universe, then I could maybe enjoy it for the Marvel references and the fact that Stanley is, is a legend. But, Excelsior. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I just still prefer to that should be the title for the for the movie Excelsior. <laughs> These things often come in twos, you know, Armageddon and Deep Impact and this and that, and you know, Volcano and the other one. So they should do this this crazy, weird, slightly left field, strange, obscure one, and then they should do a biopic and get Aaron Sorkin to write it <laughs> and get Brian Cranston to play it, and it will be fucking legendary. Okay, um, yeah, running on time here, so I'm going to wow. speed it up. Um, okay, so, um, the, Bilko, the, the Bilko experiment? Okay, so I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. But, um, Bilko experiment. Uh, this is a uh, film that's been written by James Gunn, um, and um, the premise of the film fascinates me because it just sounds like Battle Royale. So basically what this film's about is... Um, it's, uh, I'll just read the synopsis. Okay, so, um, directed by uh, Greg McLean, uh, McLean. 
Uh, he directed Wolf Creek, uh, produced by Peter Saffron. Uh, so I'm going to skip all that. Uh, Belko concerns a group of 80 Americans who, uh, in the film, are locked in the Colombian corporate high-rise office and, and are forced to in a twisted social experiment for from an unknown voice who leads them on a deadly game of kill or be killed, according to a press release from Oren. Oh, Jesus Christ, that, that, that's the fourth time Oren has come up in anything. Uh, anyway, um, just by that little synopsis alone, uh, in, a, in a building, you've got 80 people, here's your weapons, go kill each other, whoever survives wins. Isn't so, that Hunger Games in a high rise. Yes. <laughs> Isn't yes. that the plot for Saw? No. No? Is it, in this, isn't this <laughs> well, plot, so this is the plot for every every angsty, dystopian, um, teenage book nowadays, so it, it is Maze Runner, it is it is the Hunger Games, and the Hunger Games was, was, was nicked from Battle, Battle Royale, Royale. Yeah. which in its own right was, you know, an alternate sort of running man, rollerball sort yeah, of thing yeah, going on and what have you. So it's all the same stories, it's rollerballs, running man, it's Battle <laughs> yeah, Royale, yeah. it's Hunger Games, it's it's Maze Runner, and it, it is Hunger Games in a high rise. Yeah, yeah like, but the, 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 thing, the reason why I'm excited about it is because James Gunn has written it. And, Ooh. um, if if you know anything about James Gunn, he's a twisted, he's a twisted, twisted man, and um, the the fact that he's put it in a high rise building, the the body count's pretty high. There's eighty people. That's that's. Well, do you know what I mean? It's, if 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 sort of um, Die Hard, Dread, and and the Raid have shown us anything, that a high rise can be amazing for. <laughs> yes, you know, it doesn't mean that it's going to be a bad movie. I'd, I'd be intrigued. It's just... it's, it's, it's it's just. Oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. That's. And if it's a multi, if if you've got a multi-story building, you've got all these opportunities for being in different types of rooms, and having things play out in a particular way, and um, just because James Gunn writes the way he does, uh, the, I know the dialogue's going to be on point if if it's directed well, and um, it'll it'll be a, almost a, like a dark comedy as well, mm. and so uh, just I mean you can't base. Actually, could you say, have you ever seen Sliver? Yeah. Like, could, would you, would you say, would you, hmm, would you say Guardians of the Galaxy is a good indication of James Gunn's writing? Well, yeah. Writing. I mean, like, I mean, like, yeah. But then at the same time, Guardians of the Galaxy is based on the comic book. So sure, and that's, that's why and I there's thought, a lot. Mm. There's a lot in Guardians that you can tell James Gunn loved this source material, which he kind of took from the comic and put in there he did put his own spin in terms of the soundtrack and stuff like that so yeah you know um, I, I, if you look at something like sliver yeah totally agree with you guardians is such an organization of what he does best with what marvel do best it's a bit hard to tell his voice there if you know what I, I mean i think he, but, yeah i mean I, yeah. he's very good at he's he can he does i'm trying to sort of articulate what he does he um he's very good at knowingly doing these things the sliver was quite groundbreaking <laughs> apart from in the modern age apart from eight-legged freaks no nothing else <laughs> has basically said we're going to do a b-movie and do it really like a b-movie and knowingly yeah. do so that put some yeah. of the b-movie cliches in there and sliver was great for that great casting really really proper sort of 50s 60s shocker idea of slugs and invasion of the body snatcher type things and um the puppet masters and all these things from the past and, it, and it, they did that brilliantly so and then guards of the galaxy was just it, you know was very humorous as well as being mm. very well done and it, like he's a funny mean, guy and if you can keep that humor in there yeah um then yeah why not i mean it's, it's like a the old 80s and 90s pitch movie there used to be an ongoing joking pitching sort of boardrooms and stuff like that that it would be like this movie is die hard in a park this is <laughs> die hard <laughs> In a car chase, and people just and then this is it. You, you basically pitched it as Die Hard in this, and I can't yeah. help but think that someone said this is Hunger Games in a high rise. This yeah. is a that's, skyscraper that's probably how running it went. man, and, and someone's gone. Well, if you make it funny, man, then you go for it. It's done, yeah. you know. Yeah. But then you know, as I said, Raid has shown that skyscrapers can be and, really and fun. So. As you said before, what was it? Um, Dread. Dread, yeah. Dread, um, made, managed to make it work, and that was absolutely. Dread yeah. and Rage are the same film, except yeah. one's wearing a mask. But and they're both X Men. It's not a case of yeah. one tower zone to the other. Yeah. Raid was particularly amazing. No, Dread was really good, yeah. and 
Yeah. They were both in production Took at the same place. time. They both came out. It at just the same came time. out the same idea. It was just yeah. clear a building, get yeah. to the top, kill yeah. the bad guy, done, or bad girl in this case. But yeah, but yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, if they can do that and make it funny as well, and and make yeah. a nod that he knows that the movie is purposely cheesy yeah. or purposely it's like, like a wink to the audience. Hey, yeah. <laughs> and I respect <laughs> everyone who's doing that. <laughs> it's it's the people who churn out movies like Resident Evil, and they and it's so bad, and there's no winking, and it's because none of them get it, and none yeah. of them are winking. And then you go, oh yeah, you guys don't know how to make. And so yeah, if you can do that, then that's great. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, on from that to Avengers Infinity War, and uh, <laughs> the Russo brothers have discussed of having the. See, there's two separate ent. Well, there's three separate entities, I guess, to the to this universe. So you've got the film universe, and you've got the the TV universe that references the the oh, film. Oh, yeah, Agents of Shield, and you've got and the Jessica. Rest of the new defenders coming up next. Yeah. Yeah, you've got the defenders. You've got Jessica Jones. You've got uh, what's the Iron, Iron Fist. guy? Iron Fist. Iron Fist is coming out. We've got Luke Cage. Luke we've got Cage. Daredevil. We've got Punisher. The but, the just the one sheet of the the to- the title and the cast, and this is what DC is screwing up. They are really cocking this up in the sense that Marvel consistently went, no, we've got this massive. 10 20 phase plan mm-hmm. and the tv shows are, are exceptional and really good and he's not doing anything stupid like dcr with the flash where he's going oh but we'll cast this one but this isn't really canon and this isn't canon or this is sort of canon mm. but we're going to change the actor who plays the flash in the movie because he wants someone who's more pretty boy that the girls like yeah. and he's going no these actors are going to do it and it's going to look amazing and by the time it gets to this thing you're just going to be excited yeah, and you're that, just going to be going oh my god everyone's in it and that might normally dilute a film like that, but if, if Civil War showed anything, which is you can have all these people in it <coughs> and new people introduced, yeah. and you can just have a fanboy wet dream and just go, wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and so this, yeah, this is what I've, uh, uh, the Russo brothers have, have been discussing to bring the TV characters into the films. I mean, even if it's like just like a two-second cameo, it would, hey, it's... It's they Jessica done, Jones, or it's. They've done uh, that with Sif. They brought Sif into Age of Sif. Yeah, yeah, and I, I really, lo- I really appreciated that. It's like, oh god, Lady Sif, and and it brought all of that uh, Sif, the, the, the one of the Sif mythology, the Sif mythology, Force. Force. Uh, f- uh, North mythology uh, <laughs> characters, Sif mythology, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, characters into Agents of Shield, and it was even though it was just that one episode or two episodes, I think it was across. It was two, uh, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, I was. That's what engrossed me, and that's why I could. T- Even though the first series of Agent Shield was, uh, um, I was, I was back. I, yeah, it, 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 it started to. It's st- it I'm, started I'm to currently what I'm just finishing off the third series or whatever. It is, yeah, third. Of that, and and it's they're not as good as. Oh like, no, no, they're, not at all. it is one of the weaker links. But I still love the it's, characters and films and blah blah. And the, and the fact that they've shelved the Inhuman um, films and but then have kind of introduced the Inhumans as the major plotline for the third series of Shield and it's mm. it's so good and yeah. you you know that you know the Daisy character is going to be one yeah. of the people in there because she's powerful and, and it's just great and it's just there is that there is that sort of cameo thing where you see people crossing over and that's what the cinematic universe has done so well mm. which people in DC are, are sitting there shouting at each other going uh-huh. we're doing it wrong <laughs> they've got it so right the Marvel Cinematic Universe feels like a universe and when you see Luke Cage in Jessica Jones you go oh my god that's amazing mm. when Punisher it became one of the antagonists of Daredevil everyone and got it so right after uh, that, that, that Dolph Punisher. Lundgren and everyone else has got it wrong and yeah. suddenly you've got him doing it so well so yeah I the, think that the guy who plays Punisher wow John, Bur- John Berthold yeah. yeah fantastic um, he plays it right and it's because they weren't scared to this they said let's make a, a, a visceral thing and anyone said oh well it's a TV thing so they're going to tone it down just watch where he clears the prison corridor <laughs> yes yeah. that is and fantastic it's just like, you know fantastic. show that to the naysayers and they will shut the fuck up and go oh <laughs> so my god I'm going to say this with that particular thing you see I quite like Thomas Jane as the Punisher Okay, I didn't, uh, I didn't particularly. Uh, no, uh, yeah, <laughs> made John Travolta the let, me, let me finish. <laughs> let, me finish <laughs> let me finish. I quite like him as the Punisher, and even though his movie wasn't triple A, I like that short that they put out online, Dirty Laundry. If you haven't checked it out, check it awesome. out. Just YouTube Dirty Laundry. It's a fantastic short with Thomas Jane, which is very Punisher esque. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I've seen that. But check it out. But you know what? Because of that short, I was like, yeah, Thomas Jane. You know what? Never 
never doubt Marvel when it comes to casting, okay? Because they pick the guy, okay? They pick the guy. That guy was such a fantastic Punisher. Their casting and that, and that, and that, that prison scene, that's what you want from Punisher. I mean, look, yeah. everything about the Punisher in that season, he was a force to be reckoned with throughout that season. He fucking owned that show. Yeah. For me, anyway, yeah, as, a, <laughs> as a huge Punisher fanboy, I fucking loved it. He, and, he and, 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 it on the I know. And, and, and I this, know. Is, <laughs> this is just the thing. Kevin Feige knows what he's doing. Like, look at the Spider-Man casting with everyone bitching. Shut up. It's of course. It's got, rather, it's the got, idea of a Latin American Mary Jane and yeah, everyone's gone it's mental. Like, well, it's they like, haven't even confirmed that. And even if they, even if she was... I've said this last week, okay, or a couple of weeks ago. Even if Mary Jane is black, okay, I'm going to say this. Mary Jane, what are her, her key char- characteristics? She's a redhead. She's red-haired and she's fiery <laughs> and, and funny in temper. And, that's, and, and, and she's, like, she's, 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 she's like, supposed to be beautiful. She's with, the with, hottest with. girl at school. She goes on to become a supermodel. Now tell me. Did Kirsten Dunks ever <laughs> have those qualities? That, oh, no. 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 Now, now, she now. Only had even a, though... She only had a couple of qualities I liked, and they were both visible in the scene with the uh, with the water, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, does, did Shannon Wood... Is it Shannon Woodley? Or the, the, the detergent... Yeah, she detergent? was She was going she, to be. She was cut out, but you see her in the deleted what? scenes. Was she Mary Jane ever? No. No. But They've again. got... If Now, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm a 36-year-old man. She's 18. It's a bit controversial here. because no, I'm not. Go, well, I'll probably cut that out. Adrian, <laughs> but, Adrian, but Adrian, this is another Saturday night for you. She a hottie, okay? She I a like hottie. To point out, we are cinephiles here. We are not entitled <laughs> to the file. <laughs> <laughs> She a hottie. I'm just saying, she's well, a hottie. She also, fits the well, bill. Talk, she's talk out. Casting. She's out of fucking um, the kids' league to date. Talk if she's casting. Mary Jane, Topher spot Grace, on casting. Topher Grace is Eddie Brock. How could they have Eddie <laughs> run as, as subject as, of hand, man? As, as Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock was meant to be absolutely huge, and they got that skinny guy from that '70s show. And it just did not go our way. They didn't know. even send him to the gym. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, that's a great thing, as you say. I mean, that wasn't a Marvel film. It was a no, no, Sony film. And that's the great thing. The Marvel people, the casting has been spot on. And, yeah, since it's, and, since Marvel takes yeah, control of them. Everything's been good. And, yeah. and the casting of, of, of um, the, the lad who plays uh, Spider-Man was so good. And they're, you watch... Yeah, and I love the fact that they've gone, fuck it, we're not going to do another... Another origin movie. I got bitten by a spider. There's a nice little point in in it. Where oh yeah, goes, where, yeah, where he goes. Oh, it's a long story. I and 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 Tony Stark. I don't care. And, that's, <laughs> that's and, and that and that was a very nice little nod, as if to say we don't care. We've seen it a million times. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's crazy. Um, the, I think Homecoming's going to be amazing. Yeah, um, there's yeah. there's been leaked footage of the shows. That it's going to have the shocker in there as one of the baddies. <laughs> um, and he looks great. And he looks amazing. He looks great. Like, he looks does. great. They managed to make um, the shocker work. Uh, Vulture's not one of the ones that everyone's tried before because it's normally such a goofy character. But I believe they can do it. Mike Keating can do it. Adrian as well. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But if Michael Keaton is Birdman, they just basically have to spray his costume green and now Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm I'm always happy Marvel. They've never done a major misstep. There are films that I like less. Some of the Iron Man films are not. There was some of the great ones and what have you. But they're still good movies. Consistently good. Um, And and most of the time, consistently excellent. Yeah. I, I like you enjoy Tom, watching them. That's like the, Tom, I, I, I'm a listen. massive Marvel MCU fanboy. I was a big Marvel fan when I was younger. I don't read comic books much anymore, and so it's more about the movies now. My way of reliving my childhood, and I'm yeah. a massive MCU fanboy. And DC are just falling over themselves to fuck it up, trying to do what they do. And it's the whole idea of the universe. And I think going yeah, back to it's... Infinity Wars, when I see Jessica Jones in there, even if she's you know she's she she would be like a gnat to um to Thanos. Thanos is gonna be terrifying. <laughs> yeah. But for every Stephen Strange and Hulk, you need a, a Daredevil and a Punisher and the fact yeah. that they're all gonna be involved and I'm just so excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, uh Sach, any more to add to that? Yeah, no, I think Greg just nailed it. <laughs> just now. Okay. All right, I um, I'm gonna try and wrap this up. Um so yeah. That's uh that's for the that's everything for them. 
Yeah, news topics. Everything is from the news topics. A lot of news topics. What is wrong with me today? Great, you've got uh, an old but new. Not yet, not yet. Oh, not yet? Not I, yet haven't, I haven't yet. I haven't yet. Um, we've, we've got to do the main story, which is, uh, well, something that I'm quite uh, uh, acute to at the moment. is, And that's um, music and, f- uh, and films at the moment, uh, especially the bigger tempo films. In the 80s and 90s, uh, in fact, going from the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s uh, to the early 2000s, they used to, you could, you could re- uh, watch a film and remember the theme. Now, if, if I told you to, you know the theme to Star Wars, you know the theme to Jurassic Park and what have you. Um, these days, try, if you try, and, and I know it's not anyone's particular fault, but uh, try to remember what, Iron Man's theme is, or Thor's theme is. They don't. There's no representation in the score of what their theme is. Can I ask, have you seen just because this is very intriguing? Have you seen the short, like almost like a documentary short? Yeah, yeah, I was watching that so last week, which was based where a gentleman said sing Star Wars, sing Just and then he says people sing the Avengers theme. Yeah, and nobody could. And then he does a fantastic um, breakdown of of why we can't remember and it's all about he looks into temp scores and movies yeah. he looks into taking the obvious choice um and not actually ha- and, and, and you know the major thing is that there's no theme tunes this is mm. it john williams is the king of the theme tune and it's more about really safe ambient scoring it's a sad moment we have a sustained note mm-hmm. yeah and it's, and it's like no one's gonna be able to hum that it's just a note so yeah <laughs> exactly, so yeah, yeah. so yeah, no, it's it's fascinating that thing. As, I mean, I mean, some characters don't need that. I mean, if if I go back to films like Blade, for instance, his everything about Blade was about the <laughs> everything, every, everything about Blade was about that. Um, it was it was lots of different types of house music uh, because of the type of character Blade was. He was a very dark character. He was, was always out at night. It's usually around uh, nightclubs uh, where, where vampires hang out and. Um, it was it was about the soundtrack of that of the moment and all the, all the music from the first Blade film I still remember. I I don't know if that's got anything to do with um, because I like the film, but I just remember the, for the first scene you can remember the the music. It was house music, but I, I'm, I've the, got it in my head now. So yeah, that's what I mean. It. And so. and that's what and, and that's the, in in terms of thing. It wasn't a particular thing, but it was a. It was music that you could remember. If you can remember that, and you can remember the film, then the 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 guys who the guy who mixed the music has done his job or so, done their job. So, on a discussion of music, I mean, I, I my I've got a massive love of of as well as modern stuff. I've got a massive love of eighties films. I was built born in the late 70s I grew up watching a lot of 80s films my daughter is now four and a half and she's watching loads of 80s films she's a massive fanboy of 80s films she'll she'll be talking about sort of like you know Back to the Future her yeah. favourite film of all time is Stand By Me she's, oh wow yeah she's really she's got really good taste in them. she's been watching <laughs> all the 80s movies with me she still will pick a Goonies over a modern sort of thing or whatever yeah. um, and a lot of these things I've built a Spotify playlist which is 80s movie songs so as well as the great themes there's lots of great Great songs, you know, that you remember from mm. 80s movies, you know, you from, cool? from, hmm? from, 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 cool? oh, well, yeah, yeah so, so, so yeah, he's on, he's on the list and so's Danger Zone, but you know, from Top Gun and, 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 and uh, Footloose and, <laughs> and the best you can get, um, you get from, um, from, uh, from, Ah, uh, what's her face from uh, Karate Kid? Oh, uh, look at me! I'll take you down, and you know, and and all these things. The Transformers movies are all oh my these God, things. Yeah. They're stunning movies. Yeah. You know, Cindy Lauper, go- the Goonies are good enough. Good enough. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. It's a mark. I could just sit there and sing them. And, and, <laughs> but, that, but, but, but this but is a massive, and it's and this was the. I mean, they don't do that anymore. They don't have theme songs. They no. they might occasionally do a slow down version of. Crazy in love for, <laughs> yeah. for for fifty shades of shit that we don't care about. But, <laughs> yeah. but the, the whole point is, 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 is they don't do that anymore. It, it may be a little bit eighties and a little bit cheesy, but that was classic. But then also the theme tunes you can remember from yeah. those days as well. And uh, just going back to if the, the last, um, going back to what I was saying before, the last memorable theme that I can, I'd say Inception. Inception's a, Inception has a clear theme in it. Uh, the Dark Knight. <laughs> It was, yeah. Very hard to distinguish what 
Yeah. His I, theme is. I couldn't say this. I tell you, I, I've, I've got. That's I, what I mean. I love theme tunes. I hate the Dark Knight theme tune for one simple reason. Okay, it's almost killed me at least four times. Okay? <laughs> because you, I've I've got various theme tune um, CDs, and the Dark Knight will often appear on them. And uh, and I'll be listening to you know and I'll just had ET's theme and Jurassic Park theme and then Don I will come on and it'll go all quiet so I'll be driving along in my car listening to CD and I'll turn it up and I'll turn it up and I'll turn it up and you hear <laughs> which is basically the Don I theme it's just like a foghorn of of orchestral hits and just goes <laughs> and then I swerve into the false lane narrowly missing a guy going fucking shit where did come yeah, turn yeah. it right down again yeah, and yeah. then remember yeah that's what that does um, yeah and, so. and, the, and the thing is um, with uh, uh, what's his name what's his name um, uh, Hans Zimmer he he's a, a lot of people really like Hans Zimmer I don't I don't hate Hans Zimmer but his his scores I'd say Glenn, the best score he's done was for Gladiator, because I remember Glad, Gladiator's score was yeah. exceptional, especially the 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 um the song. The, 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 yes, yeah, yeah. The, and the, that the, the is main one theme, of the yeah. best. He's one of the best um, melodies in a theme outside yeah. of John Williams that I've heard. It is. Uh, I mean, I love that sort of epic, and uh, that's the sort of thing that I could put on and have tears in my eyes. So. That's, but that's what I mean. It was. It was. I could. I don't even need to. I could just listen to the soundtrack, and I can picture the the scenes. Of the film, and um, I haven't been able to do that with a film soundtrack in a very long time. I'm gonna put one to you and see if you think. I think that the the newly rebooted Star Trek things have got a really good theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I agree. and yeah, people, yeah. and that's one that people, you know, um, learn. Really and once the, the more you listen to it, the more you see them and go, actually, I really like this, and this can hold its own with mm. previous Star Treks. I like yes. how with the Star Trek one, at the end of the credits, they they, put the they kind stuff. of mixed it in with the that's original the, theme that's the Michael end. Giacchino as well yeah, yeah that's Michael Giacchino as well so yeah, so, this, yeah the new Star Trek theme I think again just as of John Williams is, is one of the best ones going mm. I liked that I like the new movies that likes you know sequels to old movies are going well we're going to keep the theme so the Independence Day um, came out and it kept the Independence Day theme yeah. which again was is, is which, which classic, is important it's all it, sort of like you know drums and, and pipe and <laughs> Yeah. I've only got one. And then when it builds up, you get shivers. Oh, yeah? And that is just the original Superman movie. <laughs> what? Well, well, that, well, well, this is it. This That's is what just I mean. It. This is just it. Does anyone remember? There was a theme tune. But does I, this, anyone, is what, this is what I argue to Ken. Anyone, no one's going to remember it. Does anyone remember the Man of Steel theme? No. I haven't seen the Man of Steel, so no. <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> <Well, laughs> fucking Superman. <laughs> You haven't no. seen Man of Steel? I, no, I fucking hate Superman. Oh, okay. I, I will just about let Christopher Reeve off because yeah, but, I grew see, up with that. Uh, this is what I mean. And it's rude to talk bad of him yeah. because of all that. Christopher <laughs> <laughs> Reeve was, was an absolute legend. I'm like, I love him. He, it, to, to me, he, he made that character believe. I don't like Superman as a character. And Christopher Reeve's version of, of that, mate, it just, it, I don't know what, what it was about him, but... He was the right he just had that right awesome. amount of corniness to make it, but he made it seem. But he evil. played both the characters. Yeah. He, yeah. When he was um, Clark okay. Kent, he was Clark Kent. When he was Superman, he's a completely different person. You know what? I posted it up on my Facebook feed today. I was just like going through clips, and they had a HD version. Someone posted a HD version finally of like. Him saving Lois Lane for the first time. Him doing the. You got me. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, but you know what? That one scene has more. Um, what you call it? Has more thrills. Has more action and drama and dynamic than any one of these superhero movies that are out at the moment. Because of the apart way from the Marvel universe. Well, no, 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 no. I'll, even, I'll, even, I'll even have you the stuff that Marvel do. It's because of the way he constructs the set piece in that whole, such that a whole shame set piece. Playing Superman. Yeah, such a shame. <laughs> but but you know, it was like a good introduction to the character. Mm. It was a good hero moment. It was a good save the girl show the strength with the with the helicopter and the fact it was all done in the 70s and the way it was done shot for shot if you dissect that shot for shot still holds up now yeah it does because it's a great movie making i i, I love it I, I as much as i hate superman i like yeah. original superman i i like them because i watched them before i realized i hated superman i watched <laughs> them as a kid before yeah. i started reading the comics and going superman is just broken 
He's yeah. so no, because he's he's powerful. He's one of, a, you one, can't do anything to him. One of his powers is okay, and this one doesn't get turned into the cinematic universe very often. But one of his powers is he can remove each of his digits, fingers, and thumbs to turn into a miniature little Superman that has all the power of a big Superman. Okay, now. Okay, and it's the word all the powers, which then means that each miniature Superman should, in theory, like some <laughs> crazy <laughs> infinite mineral thing going on, be able to move his fingers. So he's there like could be dog. infinite Supermans, <laughs> all with the power of Superman, making Ant Man seem pussy like because they are all uber powerful, godlike, but the size of an atom. Yeah. Okay, forget about this. Oh, if I shrink between the planes, I will keep on shrinking. By the time the 75th Superman has taken off his fingers, they're going to be pretty much microscopic. And it's like, and this. And That's this, scary. It's also, funnily enough, they didn't I use this, see that power. They don't need it's, it's in the comics, guys. Read your comics and you'll realise how shit Superman is. Yeah, but that's the thing. This is, I, I, I think this is the thing because, like, before the 80s, before they, before DC did their uh, Silver Age of comics, okay, where they rebooted, kind of rebooted some of the characters and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that was Superman because <laughs> with Superman, when they rebooted Superman, they just kept it to his core powers in the original Superman movie. And they got rid of some of his other, other crazy powers because in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and the, and the seventies, it was kind of like, shit. Let's, really yeah, let's, let's give him a new, let's give him a new power. Let's give him a new power. Cause like, you know what? When Superman two, when Richard Lester came on board to direct that, obviously that dude didn't, you know, didn't stick with Richard Donner's notes. But he read or saw like other Superman comics. That's why in Superman two he had this teleportation shit. The S came out. You know what I mean? He just went through everything. You know yeah. what I mean? But not brought, uh, you know, not brought a um, ruler of consistency. Yeah, there, to show his powers. To the fifties, man, and added in the chauvinistic, slightly, <laughs> slightly <laughs> racist, slightly dickish, um, horrific to women, a bit rapey occasionally. Um, there was a great storyline where he basically said he'll adopt Jimmy Olsen, and he spent a week being really nice to him, and then went fuck you, Jimmy Olsen, basically, all sorts of purposes, <laughs> and and became such a dick to him that Jimmy Olsen didn't want to be adopted by Superman, and that was a whole comic book <laughs> arc. And oh, my just, <laughs> yeah. oh my god! Yeah. Oh yeah. I won't dislike someone just because of a name. I dislike him because I've done the research, and he's a twat. He's a such <laughs> a bad character. It's oh, wow. make him do everything, and then a rock from his home planet will make him weak for some unbeknown reason. Um, anyway, I, I guess it was just a way to keep him under, to, because you invite a character that is invulnerable to everything. Then okay, well, how do we uh, downgrade his? Power? Okay, well, the rock from. I, I'm sure it was just something that they made up. He's, um, also, and, he's also vulnerable to magic as well. Yeah. Yeah, but... <laughs> that, that's, look, we're, get, we're, going, we're going down a rabbit hole here. Um, in terms of uh, musical scores... Um, oh, that's what uh, we were talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought we were still on comic books. So I, <laughs> I thought somehow I forgot about the musical score. I thought we were straight off from Infinity Wars. Just, like, yeah, no, we're, we're way past that, aren't we? Yeah, we went into a rabbit Sorry. hole. Right? Sorry. We, uh, we, okay, so... I said I'd rant. Uh, on to... Uh, the last thing I'll say about musical scores is that um, I think with Giacchino and there, there are a lot of there are a lot of composers out there that really love th that come from that John Williams era that want to bring uh, theme back into films uh, and um, uh, there's some directors that say that think that a theme should you shouldn't hear a theme it should just be there should be an undertone of music and the dialogue and every sound effect should. Uh, be above that, and I totally disagree. If 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 you can place a theme into a play, if they did it in the sixties, uh, seventies, eighties, and nineties, you can still do it, and um, that's something I really hope to see. The one of the last films I appreciated that in was the Spider Man film, Sam Raimi Spider Man films. Mm. Um, uh, who's the composer called? Um, Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman did a really good job with that, and I. I, I hope I hope they do something for Spider-Man Homecoming, but because I know because it's Marvel, um, they don't like to pay their, um, well, their composers. Well, Ike Ike didn't like to pay up. It's it's the regime's changed now, hasn't it? Yeah, it has changed. Actually, the the Bourne films have a theme. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but, they just take a U two song and then I'm they replay the same, they No, it's not a U two song. But oh, they, yeah, do, yeah. They, they do they do. 
I just, mm-hmm. thought, I just literally mm-hmm. thought about it. I just remember, like, yeah. I know what he's talking about. It's the Moby. It's, it's the Moby theme at the end That's of the yeah, film. Yeah, but no, even, no, even before that. It's the. That's again. That's a theme. But this is it. You you hear a theme to and a song. You don't sit there and go, oh, it would have been better without the theme. It always adds something to it, unless it's a bad theme or or a theme that's meant to be memorable and just isn't. It's just a bad composer, but. You know, obviously, I will always sing the praise of John William. I think he's in a in a league of his own. But, yeah. But um, but you know, every new thing he comes up with is an instant classic. You know, so Harry Potter, instant classic. Yeah. Blah blah blah. And the guy knows the right thing. But when you have stuff like Danny Elfman, Spider Man, or I, I apologize, I don't actually know who did the Star Trek theme, but it's a great oh, theme. That was um uh. J- J- uh the... Which Star Trek theme? The recent. Uh, one? The recent no. Star Trek. Oh, oh uh, the... Michael Giacchino. My... The guy, oh, so that's my the, so guy that, the guy that's doing uh, Rogue One. So there you go. So I mean, so maybe with Rogue One, you know, we, we, we obviously it's going to be based around themes, and they will be using John Williams' themes as well as adding some of his own. And mm. I don't doubt it. Based on Star Trek, then like, that he will add some new fantastic themes because every movie does. I mean, as much as the prequels are a swear word, pretty much. You know, um, the Jewel of Fate is is a classic theme. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's absolutely amazing. I, I, um, I cannot fault any of his themes in the, um, in the, so in the films. The themes well, are good. Well, well, Johnny Williams, there's no fault in Johnny Williams. No. It could be a dog shit film, but Johnny Williams was involved. It'd be like, at least, at least it'd be like, cool soundtrack. You but like Joseph I mean? said, I hope they bring back themes in films. I, oh, yeah, I agree yeah. completely. I think yeah. that's... I think this this generic scoring of of mood scoring and and playing it safe and stuff like that is it's, really it's, really weird. Have you guys ever seen the original Star Wars trailer without John Williams theme? Yeah. <laughs> and <we're> wow. Not- <laughs> And we're, we're gonna from that we're gonna <laughs> completely segue into uh, old but new. <laughs> old but new. Uh, What's that? Old but oh, new. Well, funny enough, the music was a part of this one. I'm, I, I when when Satcher surprised me, he said, "Oh, we can do a film." I was thinking of loads of old but. So what? What's the? Uh, What's the the, the the remit here? I meant to choose a, an old film that I like. Anything about. that you any, want to talk about? Any, any, any film. And you just you talk, talk about, about that film yeah. and why it's good and why the kids should watch it. Okay, well, I'm going to pick a film. This is not my favourite. This is a good, very good film and, and a, and a, and a favourite to an extent of mine, but it's not my favourite film of all time. But What's I your really... favourite film of all time? Oh, right? God. Do you know what? I don't think I could pick it. I'd, I'd, but, I'll be very... Let's not, let's not deviate. Yeah, I'll no, be no, no, but like, for conversation's sake, well, what's I'll... your top three? Oh, I, time. I, I don't even know if I have a top three. I have um, a third time. I love <laughs> things like Shawshank no, Redemption uh, and things like that, which okay. everyone loves, but I, there are so many films I like, and, and as soon as I say <laughs> something, I'll go, oh, and I forgot about John Carpenter's sort of thing. And I know that <laughs> there's that, and there's that. I could probably do a top... 20 or top 50 given a couple of hours or a few days to yeah. do it um, so for the sake of yeah do a question but this this I really liked because it's a remake and it's one of the rare occasions where a remake is better um, but I'm even more devastated to hear they may be remaking the remake which I think may be pushing it um, and it used really good music it didn't have a theme but it, it used this this one thing for all the capers and stuff which is now being reused in every TV and film show ever oh, really? and it's uh, the Thomas uh, Crown Affair Ah, uh, yeah. Where the, the first one it. is a classic, and the Steve McQueen one and, and Faye Dunaway one is amazing, um, and it's well acted and this and that. But but the Pierce Brosnan and uh, one that, that that came out oh back in the late nineties, early 2000s, no, no, it's the early two thousands, early two thousands was 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 just brilliant because it was great casting. Um, you know, you felt it was really good. Um, Dennis uh, was face as the uh, as the police guy is is really he's a really good comedian and very good actor. For oh my that. gosh, I can't remember anyone. Dennis in Leary, um, yeah. Dennis Brosnan. Um, it had uh, oh, what's her name? God, my mind's gone blank. Renee Russo. Rene yeah, Russo. Russo. I was <laughs> just thinking Renee and saying Zellweger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't get past that. Um, and she's a great cat thing, and and surprisingly hot body for someone of of of, of, of sloping maturity years, um, and <laughs> is not shy to show it off. But, yeah. But it's just the the ingenious of the writing. The capers are brilliant, and the first one lacked the fact that it was just a, a millionaire stealing money, you mm-hmm. know, for the sake of it. And it was a great, or well, billionaire stealing money. And this one, it was about a billionaire stealing art. But the way he did it, and and the, the things were very clever. And the and the the third act and the wrap up and the sort of like the the punchline and such was was so cleverly done that you just sit there and go, ah oh, yes. And and I think it's brilliant. I think it's a very well made film. I think it's. 
equally as good, if not better, than the original. Original. The score is good. It's got uh, "Where are you gonna run to?" Run out down my way, and all these oh, yeah, sorts, the songs yeah, that everyone that, yeah. will now hear in every thing ever. You know, it's that the caper song, it seems, and um, <laughs> and it's got like an instrumental one, which everyone knows as well, and. And uh, yeah, I just think it's really good, and it's nice to see Piers Brosnan doing something good outside of Bond, which was good up until the point they screwed it up. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, yeah, I just I really like it. I thought it was an excellent movie, and I think that people should watch it, and it's fun and light-hearted, and you'll enjoy it. So what I like about this movie in particular, it's another classic churned out by John McTiernan, who's one of my favourite eighties directors. I mean, is he still like, in prison? Uh, no, he's out. He's okay. out. But John McTiernan has been in prison for tax evasion. Oh, but, um, he you know, he's but, joining Wesley Snipes. Yeah, he, yeah. Probably, he probably did a Wesley <laughs> Snipes. But you know what? This guy, this guy's done some of my favourite movies of all time. He did Predator. He did the, the original Predator. Now he did, that's one. That's yeah. on the top of he one did, of the top of my yeah, list. He did Die awesome. Hard, the original Die Hard. He did The Hunt for Red October. He did Medicine Man with Sean Connery. Last Action Hero with Schwarzenegger. Um, yeah. Die Hard with a Vengeance. Thirteenth awesome. Warrior. You know, so many good fucking movies. And the only reason why he hasn't done anything in years is because he's been in jail. Well, that's that's a good reason, I yeah. suppose. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's an excellent director, and it's a well directed film. It's a well crafted film, and it's it's just it's, it's, as I said, it's it it wouldn't make the top ten of my films. Um, I, I was thinking about doing something very old like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, which I still think is one of the best westerns ever. And, and obviously, oh, Mel would love you. And uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I, I was thinking of picking that. I was picking someone like John Carpenter, the Thing, and talking about how, you know, the wire scene is is a master. Oh my god, yeah. Intention with even nothing. Even today. Even today. Oh my and, gosh. You know, X Files. One of the best episodes was ripping off the thing with some sort of Arctic thing where they literally ran out of budget and they literally made they ran out of budget and just did a thing pastiche where they basically had this tension of a virus and stuff. And, and so John Carpenter kind of wiped the lyrical about and all these great things. Obviously, I love Shawshank Redemption and all these. I could go for it for hours. And but but yeah, I just thought this one because it's it's a remake. Of, of an old film and I think it's better and in this day and age where everyone's remaking everything mm -hmm. for good or bad reasons you know uh, Ghostbusters whatever you know whatever people's you know moans are and there are films that I think shouldn't be remade and if I'd seen the 60s original and someone said they're remaking this I might have groaned originally I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't hear about it until it came out I watched it and I thought this is excellent it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a good fun caper movie it is you know, it is sort of a two man or one man Ocean's Eleven. It's very cleverly yeah. done, yeah. Um, but more memorable and better. And I just thought it was good, good yeah. fun, basically. So okay, so that's my oldie, not not a classic classic one, but it's yeah, no, but yeah, I mean, it's I think it's far back enough that um, it could be rediscovered, especially that they're doing another one. And, and that, that scares me because there's only so much time you can sort of you know, I, sort of make gold and they did it with Spider Man. Really <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, Three times. <laughs> oh, but that, yeah, but that's when it's now. This is where it gets interesting. This is where most remakes. When we talk about Resident Evil back in the time, I almost said that most remakes, um, especially with the comic books, are all about keeping the licenses. So yeah, they're yeah, only yeah. turning out Spider Man and Fantastic Four's a case in point. The, oh, gosh, the yeah. 1990s Fantastic Four, which you should check <laughs> out if you haven't. Yeah, I've seen bits of it. Uh, um, wow. showed it to me. Um, the the one with, you know the one Roger back in the the Roger Corman one the Roger Corman yeah. one yeah then the ones back in the two thousand and the and the latest ones they're all about keeping hold of the thing and and I I could I could if we had time I would give a, a a lecture on just how much Marvel and Fox and Sony are dicking each other over and some of the dick moves they've made and stuff like that yeah. but it's all about just turn out a shit movie now so we can keep the rights and hopefully turn out a good movie in the future yeah um yeah. and and I'm kind of glad that. Sony and and Marvel the Barry the Hatcher go well, yeah. let's do why don't we do a good movie because you know we're going to make a good movie and it'll make you shit tons of money our shit tons of money mm -hmm. and we'll make Spider-Man good again yeah. well, I, say, um, I say God bless the Koreans because if it wasn't for the Sony hacks we would never have had this deal well yeah yeah, yeah. this is good and, and one hopes that the Fox will make the deal um, I don't think it'll ever happen with X-Men because they're making too much money and they're not bad actually they're not cocking that up well, you, know, well, but you say that that whole Legion TV series has yeah. rid us to that and Brian Singer's uh, producing that show and, um, and that show's been under the Marvel banner and so, and so, is, so yeah. I don't know what's going on yeah. but there's something going on you know what uh, and so I've, I 
everything no, no, no. I, 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 we're, we're spinning we're into spinning another around uh, superheroes and cakes again no 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 we, we, we just yeah. we've, we've got into old but new into comic books again. yeah okay. <laughs> let's, let's go, go. Let's let's go. go. Film's opening this week, and so we have the girl, uh, the girl of the gifts, uh, and we have the Magnificent Seven, and we have Akira. Okay, so uh, the girl of the gifts, uh, it's a. Um, Akira's out. Oh, the re-release. Yeah. Ah, okay. Right. You're talking about the. Uh, the Bollywood the, the, one. Yeah, yeah, the Bollywood Akira. No, no, it's not that. <laughs> Canada. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so um, the girl of the gifts. That's um, it's a zombie film, I believe, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, uh, I don't see how this differs from uh, World War Z or any other zombie film that's that's preceded it, and um, uh, to me, I uh, I don't I don't know, I I don't know if why this film is necessary, but um, it's got a bit of um, what's that film called with uh, uh, oh gosh I can't remember the name of the film, but Clive Clive Owen's in it. Uh, it's a, uh, children of Men. Children of okay, Men. Okay, so um, it's, no one can have children anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one kid that can. This film seems to be following a similar tone to that, where this kid has got the something in her genes for a cure to the virus, to this zombie virus, and. Um, Oh, and is it about them protecting her? And yeah. Her was this based on a book or something? Or? <coughs> I couldn't tell you that. Um, I, I I'm so sexual. It rings a bell. I think, I swear, it was, I heard it. Maybe I just heard about the film, but... I've actually got no information on this film. This oh, really? This is the first time I've heard of it. Oh, what? Do you um, know, we know we talked about this in uh, one of our trailer reviews. We did? Yeah. Okay, well, I totally <laughs> forgot, which means it didn't really leave an impact. Well, this is this is what I mean. It's That's like, just it. It's like the I last mean, the, 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 the last the, zombie film since, since last, last week. week. Yeah. <laughs> As you know, I have seen it because I remember this bit with the kid. and the, Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I don't care. It's um, got a, it's got a good cast. It seems. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's got, got a very good cast. It's got Johnny Constantine. It's got Jem Austin. Uh, Austin. I mean, it's based on a novel. And it might be best. Yeah, yeah I, th I I think if if they do, I mean, obviously you don't normally sort of uh, think of the word fresh with uh, zombies, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, they do, <laughs> if they could do something fresh with it, I've got it's got bloody good clothes in it. That's amazing. So you know if. If they could do something fresh with it and make it a nice thing, but zombie movies per se are, are I there hasn't been an exciting one that's um, that's meant to be scary since Twenty Eight Days or yeah, mm, yeah, later yeah, stuff like the that. First one. Um, there's been some really I really loved um, Warm Bodies as a take on a, as a zombie oh, right. yeah, zombie yeah. rom com. I think that was amazing. That was a well, really that's funny on his head completely. Yeah, yeah. and if you do do not watch Z Nation. TV well, I, 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 that's basically <laughs> just said. Well, let's take Warm Bodies and turn it into a TV series. It's a good concept. Let's nick it, and I don't agree with that. I think. Yeah. That's not so cool. What. Yeah, I've I've seen bits of it. Yeah, um, and so, I, 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 it's not something that's on my list. But as if if you're a zombie watching film fan, then yeah, go for it. Uh, it again, it's got Glenn Close in it. I I bet you any money. How many days can we get Glenn Close for? Three days. Okay, let's do every single thing we can in do with it. In fairness, the um, the film we looked at the trailer earlier with um, with the two boys social dad had Glenn Close as the mother though so that's true so maybe yeah. she's whoring herself for the money now I mean <laughs> she used to be you know very yeah. respected but you know you know she's always good in whatever she's in you yeah. know she's still, I mean she's in Guardians of the Galaxy isn't she she's in Hook yeah, no she's, way. A, she's a pirate she, she's a pirate with a beard and stuff yeah. like that near the boo box don't put me in the boo box and then they put the scorpions yeah. in that's Glenn Close in the most discreet cameo in history wow mind blown <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I what? Is Glenn <laughs> Close in <laughs> Hook. Yeah. Okay, I, I need to watch that film again now. Just for that. Glenn Close Hook, and you'll see, find the scene, and you'll go, "Oh my god, it is! It's her wearing a beard and full prosthetic, and it's it's her in this ridiculous. I don't know wow. why. It's it's an un, I don't think it's even um, credited. It's just this really discreet, strange. Someone badly wanted to work with Spielberg. Just yeah, maybe. Maybe, <laughs> maybe she was yeah. just on the set and they went, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it, man, yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, no, it, it's, unless they do something fresh, I mean, I'm bored of zombies unless they're doing something really yeah. different with it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's been done to death. It's, it's not having sex. 
Oh, wow. Only you. Seriously. <laughs> Geeky the tips would fall off. All right. <laughs> hey, I love keep the tips. <laughs> oh. It got vulgar very quickly. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, The Magnificent Seven. Uh, so um, this is an Antoine Fuqua film. I like Antoine Fuqua. Um, I've been hearing interesting things about uh, this film. It's not. It's been. It's got mixed reviews, uh, but I still want to watch it. Um, uh, it's the got remake a, of it's, the remake of the remake of the remake. It's got a great cost. Of the remake. A, respect, of, a respectful of, of time has gone past, though, to remake yeah, it. Your brother's not going to be suing them or anything. And, yeah. and you know, they've got Denzel Washington taking over your brother's role here, mm. you know, and, and they've got a fantastic cast. I mean, it looks like um, it's the Vincent reunion of Ethan Hawke and Denzel Washington and Anton Fuqua. It's like the training day reunion here. Um, you know what? I've, I've heard a lot of good. I've heard lot of mixed bags about this film but some of the people that I do take a you know that I do listen to a lot where you know reviews online where I go okay have said it's pretty good um I mean you know like you said Anton Fuqua I mean like that guy's just diverse in his movie making Training Day Southpaw um what else has he done I can't think off the top of my head but it's always been something different we won't equalizer. talk about we'll yeah. equalizer we just won't talk about King Arthur but I mean, um, King Arthur fails just because going back to Clive Owen is he can't, he's fucking awful actor. Yeah, he's really bad. <laughs> he's so part, bad. The only I mean, film, yeah. since only he's film bad about King it. Arthur, you should watch his Excalibur full stop. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, right, 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 right. Excalibur. But I mean, um, these other stuff you've mentioned is, is excellent. South Pole was, was really good, and Training Day obviously is a classic yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And, no, I'm excited about it. I mean, I, I, I like the original, but it wasn't my era. I don't feel as precious about it as I would like Ghostbusters and eighties. If they remade the Goonies, I would quit the Earth. But <laughs> they, they, you know, it's 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 it, a decent amount of time, a respectful enough time yeah. has gone past that they to make it. And it looks it looks good. They haven't gone all crazy. They haven't done the Magnificent Seven in the future or the modern era. They've, That'd be interesting, good. actually. It would be quite good. Really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> like Hunger Games in a high rise. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, no, so it looks yeah, it looks it looks quite good. Um, mm. The clip's good. It's got a fantastic cast. Um, you know, yeah. Ethan Hawke and Denzel Washington. Vincent, and Vincent D'Onofrio is it? Vincent D'Onofrio. I, I, I like, didn't realise him until I saw his name come up. And yeah. obviously, he's the big scary, uh, the wrestling sort of yeah, fighty the, brawler, the little do. John character. Yeah, 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 yeah the, yeah, the Portos or the little John or yeah. the, 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 the the fist guy. And, uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, and, and he looks. I mean, he's great. And I mean, he, obviously, he was great as as as. Sergeant Par, but he, you know, he hasn't called Private Par, but he hasn't come into, he's coming to his oh. own with, with the uh, Daredevil. Oh, uh, he's in Law and Order as well. So, yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah. he's Law and Order. And Jurassic World. I think he's in Jurassic World, but I mean, I think it's um, it's the Kingpin in Daredevil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Was that him? Yeah. 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 He's very good, and he's he's oh. very good actor, so it's great to see him in, in something as well. So, so different. Yeah, yeah, man of many faces. Normally a fat face, but... <laughs> <laughs> But a different fat face. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited about it. It looks awesome. Okay. Uh, okay, so on to the last one. It's Akira. And so Akira, as we were talking about anime earlier, it's, uh, it's Manga Entertainment's 25th um, anniversary. And um, Akira was their first film that they released under the, the Manga Entertainment label, and so they're re-releasing it. It's had a 4K thing like uh, Transformers is, go is going through right now, which we'll talk about uh, soon. Uh, we, we, I need to get you on that podcast. Um, and um, yeah, it's... Um, watch it. Akira, Akira, Akira to me was the first thing I was exposed to in terms of manga taken seriously in the sense that it's... It's not. It's not. There's no boobs or anything like that. It's not. It's not overly comedic. It's. A, it's a. It's got that um, pseudo science fiction. And in fact, Stranger Things takes um, uh, a little bit yeah. uh, from Akira, and um, it's just that that uh, this film opened me to a completely different world of what you could do. What uh, animation wasn't just Disney. It was. Um, Dark. You, you could you could do adult really adult things with with animation and and it showed me that it it could be film it could be animation as long as, as you've got a a good storyline it's a, it's it's about the story and less about what medium it is and um 
and to, to for something like that to come to the Western world was very progressive, especially for that company and what how adults viewed animation, um, and, and especially animation from Japan. And um, yeah, it, it opened a whole world to me. And so um, I, I've never seen Akira on the on the cinema screen. So that's something I want to watch. And I, I'm probably it's this is a one note thing here, but um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it, 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 Akira meant a lot to me uh, growing up. Uh, again, I I preferred it than I, I never really grew up with Disney films. I, I grew up with a few Disney films, and so um, when I saw Akira, it just it completely flipped my understanding of everything <laughs> so um, yeah um if anyone wants to chime in that is something that means a lot. might not be very short because i i as i said i'm not, i haven't seen anime but it's one mm. of the things that friends and 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 the colleagues have said you've got to watch some anime and get into anime and so many friends love it who are, are like-minded that i know I should so maybe this will be my venture into anime and i think it will be starting off you know strong if i if i watch that in the big screen then i think i'm you know yeah i i, I would I would say because there's 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 different types of anime, and so with with this this is the type of anime that I like. I like uh, something the science fiction. It's not generally science fiction, but um, takes its storyline serious. serious enough to if you and have engaging enough characters for you to kind of respect. Yeah. Uh, with a, with a lot of anime that um, that say that like Imran likes. Yeah. It's very it's very whimsical, very. Um, there the, are the, the a lot of comedic underdog, moments. Underdog kind of yeah, story. Yeah, always to do with the underdog. And that's well, fine, but that's not... You've got not, someone who's like the Joker character and it just takes it a bit too far and it ter that turns me right off. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that's not the type of anime I like. And um, I, I think you'll be more inclined to the anime I like because I like Ghost in the Shell and I like Akira. I like, I like a lot of those anime Ninja that take... Yeah, Nin Ninja Scroll again. If, if that was... That's the next. If the, if the Akira works when they when they eventually film this, um, if the, uh, Warner Brothers are making this into a feature film, I think you know, yeah. and um, that's the next one that they need to adapt. Uh, Ninja Scroll is is it's <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. I'm I'm scared. I'm scared. See, I, 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 that that's that. that's one of my favorites, Ninja Scroll, and I I I would actually die inside if they made that live action. I, no, I, I, did, I, I don't. Know. I think it's doable. I think it's doable as well, but I think it all uh, again, like I've said a million times, it all depends on the talent, the director, whether the right keys are in place to make this. The stuff. Wachowskis had such a great idea hey, for one. Yeah, well, the Wachowskis. I would love to see them adapt yeah, any the, one of these things. Yeah, they, mean, they've, they've. They've. I don't know what's happened to them. Well, so. they're now the sisters, so <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, well, one. They no, both. They're both. Yeah, they're joking. No, 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 no. They're both women. Yeah, now. they've both. They're both. Wow. Like, the Wachowski sisters. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, oh, that's awesome. I just. I, yeah, yeah, I, it's I just. Know, I just hadn't realised I knew one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they both are. Look, something beginning with L or Wachowski. Lana, L Lana Wachowski. Yeah, I didn't yeah. realise they both have. Yeah, they're both women. Hey, I, 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 these things out, I interviewed um, the Axis of Awesome, who were absolutely awesome, and the uh, lead singer of that's now a female. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Last film they did was. Jupiter ascending, uh, no, and that descended are, pretty are, quick. Are they doing a TV series? Yeah, Sensei. Oh, it's, yeah, sorry, yeah, Sensei. Sensei. Yeah, Sensei. Sensei. Sensei is awesome. Sen Sensei is very good. Are they yeah, yeah, yeah. the sisters or the brothers still? Uh, they're just called the Wachowskis now. Oh, just the Wachowskis. They're just called the Wachowskis. You know, Sensei, that was an excellent series on Netflix. Uh, the first three episodes was really weird, and then as, as, as it went right. further, oh, I, I, I just didn't see where they were going with it, and then... It started. started to, it's sense. it's it's just like when you watch the the first twenty minutes of the Matrix. So like, what's going on here? <laughs> and then it hits you. It's like, oh, <laughs> right. I understand now. And it's it's such a. I don't want to. Uh, I don't. If you ever watch it, you watch it. But it's such a good premise. Mm. Um, and I didn't even know it would. It could evoke. A, well, it left off in a cliff, semi cliffhanger. So, um, yeah, I. I where was I going with this? So yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Wachowski's doing anime would might be awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah it would be, because they're clearly not, well, they, they used to they, know what they well, were doing. Well, no, no, no. It's okay. Well, They haven't done the substantial, they've done what they wanted to do, but the films haven't been, Jupiter Sending was not a good film. No, it wasn't a good um, film. And um, I, would, I would say, well, the, their collaboration on, um, what was the film that they did with, 
Oh my gosh. Oh, Cloud Atlas. Yeah, I really liked that purely because they they just had such a unique vision of the future that I thought, wow, mm. that's I hope different. it's screwed up. I want to see, uh, um, what's his face, uh, Hugh... Oh, God, my mind's gone blank. Why have my mind gone blank? Who's, who's, Tom Hanks. Not Tom Hanks. No, no not Tom. The, uh, the guy from Notting Hill and... For what is it? Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Why is uh, my mind? Oh! Excited. I want to see him as a tribal badass. That's, that's brilliant. I've seen the makeup. I want that's to see him the film. brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, I have, I'm the, really, I haven't seen that. I know enough about it that I know that it's like different eras of the same actors. Yeah. Maybe, and I know it's out there. The, the timeline is intriguing. It, when, once you discover what, where the timelines add up, it's like, wow. Okay, that's... See, my personal favourite, my personal favourite, which was a flop, and it is based on an anime, was Speed Racer. Yeah, but Speed Racer was for people that watched the anime. Yeah, that's it was, just that, it. That they was not for an that, American audience. Oh, no, but that literally was a film where they had the source material, and they were like, we're going to do it just exactly like, yeah, like it was, that. It was you know like when you're a kid and you want to see yeah. what you saw of the cartoons? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, exactly I, what they did there. That's, that's a very, very targeted demographic though. That's, yeah, yeah. You know, that, and that's why it probably didn't work. Cause but it that, came but out this is the time. thing. Yeah. Warner Brothers Mr. Trick here. They own um, Speed Racer. Yeah, so they own the cartoon show, series. Show, show the TV series yeah. again before just, the film came out and you would yeah. have educated a lot more people to what Speed yeah. Racer was done. I, mean, I, totally I agree remember you. Speed Racer very yeah. vaguely, but I didn't go see the film and I yeah. thought it was awful. But, I, I, but, did, but this is what I mean. It doesn't yeah. lend itself to... Because it, yeah. it's all over the place. And, yeah. But that's what the anime was saying. Like. Yeah. <laughs> it's all over the place. But and to be fair, though, I, I, I remember the cartoon vaguely. I took the film, knowing that it was like a cartoon kind of thing, and I, I just watched it for what it was. I'm in the minority. I really enjoyed it. I really did. And I, I, no, maybe I, I like their aesthetics and stuff, but I really enjoyed it. I really do think if they had they have made um, Akira, because I know Warner Brothers, it's been an IP that Warner Brothers have been trying to make for years. Yeah. If they told time. me the Wachowskis were doing it, yep. I'd be interested. I'd yep, be interested. I'm down with to it. I'll be like, okay, I'll be okay. They're making live action Akira. Not too sure about this, but. I know that they know what they're doing Basically because I've seen the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd because see. you'd need a name where you'd be like, oh, okay, I, and that would be the name for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of Akira as a project, last I heard, they were trying to pay Christopher Nolan everything to yeah, yeah, be yeah. the guy. Christopher Nolan doesn't really take on other people's projects. Exactly. Yeah, he, he, takes, he does it. his own things, and that's why... You yeah, the Christopher Nolan sort of seal of approval, and yeah. he hasn't made a bad film. He occasionally makes films that confuse people. And they're all <laughs> good and they're all consistent. Yeah. Good, so. so yeah. Have you ever seen the following? His debut. Everyone uh, thinks I, it's Memento, but it's actually no, no. Following. It's the following. It's about a lost person. It's not. Before they get to that trap again. Yeah, we are. We so, are sorry, so guys. Uh, I just need to wrap this up, man. Um, okay. Uh, ne next time we'll go into it. Okay, um, yeah, that's uh, it for the films uh, opening this week. And um, on to my personal favourite, Film 20 Questions. <laughs> because you're the guest here. Oh, um, we've got two guests. Yes, so you can play along with this yeah. one as well. Adrian, Adrian, and this is a good game for Adrian. Okay, so what, what this, how this game works is that um, I've got the name of the film written down. Um, you guys have 20, 20 questions. You can ask me 20 questions about the film. I can say yes or no to them. And you have free, I can give you free clues. Uh, but that's about it. So, um, it's a lucky yes or no answer. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just yes or no. Is it ridiculously obscure? And this is not a question. Uh, yeah. I, but, is there, but just to get a sense of the game, is it going to be a ridiculously obscure movie? Or no, no, no. So it's, it's basically uh, films that we'll know. Okay. And, and, uh, but it, usually from yeah. our timeline. So um, I, I, w I, don't wanna, I don't like making it too hard. There's, there's, you can mine so many different films from our timeline that I could, you, you could play this game forever. But... Um, uh, yeah, it's usually from our timeline or just a bit before that. Some films from the okay. 60s uh, or so, some films from maybe now or this year. But, Has yeah. the movie been made in the last... Is it, I haven't it? written it down yet. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, like to, <laughs> I like to write it down just before we play. Uh, but um, Okay, got it. Has the movie come out in the last 25 years? Yes. So it's reasonably modern. 
That's is the movie of a sci-fi genre? No. Is the uh, director a big name director? Hmm. Give me one minute. <laughs> <laughs> you should look it up on the computer screen. Yeah, I think you should too. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting a lot of information out of this. He clearly doesn't know who directed this film. So no, I'm I'm not sure if he's well known. Doesn't sound good. So it's not the sci-fi genre. It's in the last twenty-five years. Um, and it's probably not a well-known director. Is it Girls and Two Cups? <laughs> <laughs> oh, You're right. a bad, bad man. I thought I'd lowered the tone. It's Adrian. He brings the worst of me. It's not Girls and Two Cups. It's Two Girls and One Cup. If you're going to do obscure, disgusting... Well, movies, it just okay. shows that I haven't really watched that film. <laughs> um, I wouldn't so, call it a film, as per se. Uh, yes, he's a, fam he's a fam Well, He's not a famous director, but... Ooh. He's famous. He's well known. So He's okay, known. so he could be uh, normally famous for being a producer or something different or what have you. Um, something different, maybe he's just, maybe he's an actor. Does is it an assembled cast? That was going to be my no. question. No. So there's a main star. Um, is it uh, of the action genre? Because, okay, yes and no. Is it worth taking a clue early so that we can actually ask no, uh, um, ask questions based around the clues? I'll, I'll, I'll leave that to you guys. I, th okay. I think you don't want to take your free clues at the end because you can yeah, 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 right. guard your questions. We'll have a clue. <laughs> okay, so uh, this, is a, this is a series of films. Uh, and this would be the fourth film in that series. Is uh, that series still going on now? Yes. Okay, so I, my mind just jumps to Rocky, but because of Creed still going on, I could be wrong. Is it a 90s film? No. Wait, so no, no, if it came out in, no, wait, wait, if it came out in the last 25 years, it can't be Rocky Four. Could be something. So, if it's you say it's the fourth one. I was I was thinking at a very. I thought it might be one of the Bond films, but so it's only they've already had four films that it's, it's in the fifth. He said it came out twenty five years ago. No, no, no. It came. It came out re within, within the last twenty five. So it's either yeah. it's either going to be the Bond films. It's going to be the Fast and Furious franchise. Um, I think they've had more than four films. They have, but he's, but he's thinking of the fourth film. Ah. Oh. So it has to. So yeah, it's, but then it could be James Bond. It, it could be it, James. Well, no, but James Bond, the fourth one, didn't come out in the last twenty-five years. Oh yeah, that's true. So it's either it's either Born or or the Fast and the Furious franchise or some sort of obscure horror franchise that is. Okay, I'm gonna have to rectify the, something. <laughs> didn't take backs. I want all my questions back. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> now you're you you're on the right track here. But I just I needed to get my facts right. Oh, it might not be the last three five years. <laughs> Is it a male lead? I was going to ask, but I was going yes. to Yes. Yes. <laughs> so so it could, so it's, it's over. It's over twenty five years. So it could be someone like Rocky or. Okay, so male lead, because it's a male lead. Okay, uh, Is it's, it the same actor? What do you mean? Is the same actor play the male lead in all of the movies? No. Does is Sylvester Stallone the the main actor? Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's Rocky Rambo. Okay. okay, and I reckon it's Rocky, oh, and it's Rocky, Rocky Four, the good one before the one Creed. we don't talk about. Oh, 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 it's Rocky Four with Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. That's <laughs> man. You got it, man. You got it. Yeah, very if he good. He dies. Good. He dies. <laughs> he dies. He dies. Yeah, I, I, um, the reason why I had to look up the um, director because I actually didn't know who he directed that. He, uh, it's, yeah, because he directed, he, he wrote and directed the first one. Yeah, and he did. wrote pretty much every subsequent one, yeah. but we don't know if he carried on directing it. So. Yeah, that's that's the thing I didn't know. So, no, it's oh, only that's the first one that he didn't direct. He's directed everyone since. 
Really? Yeah. yeah unless you count Creed, which we don't. So. I, I count Creed. Creed no, no, no I mean like... Creed's part of the canon. I yeah, mean. it's part of the canon, but I'm saying he didn't direct that one. Well, oh, right, right, right. In right, fact, right. the canon goes... Rocky 1, Rocky 2, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rocky Balboa, <laughs> Rocky Balboa <laughs> and then Creed. No, Creed. That is the canon. <laughs> Just like the Star Wars canon has four films in our presence, <laughs> okay? really the Rocky it. canon doesn't exist I, with Rocky I love, 5. I love three of Mr. T. Hey there, hey there, pretty lady. Now come with me. Come with real man. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Harbour Lang was a classic. I've watched them all again like recently. I love the Rocky films. Yeah, Lang is such a good character. Rocky IV for what a long time was pain? my favourite. <laughs> I mean, I think it was pretty... Rocky IV was classic 80s cheese, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, movie, the song from that's on uh, Hearts, Hearts on Fire. Fi- that's on my Spotify soundtrack. <laughs> wow. Uh, you really, is, really got the collection going well. It is a good Spotify well. soundtrack. <laughs> soundtrack. Um, yeah, no, that's a classic. Okay, one. well, yeah, uh, good job, guys. That was a uh, uh, you Some made that and a clue. you made that hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to film buffs, <laughs> straight face, don't blink, don't don't make any uh, suggestion that you guys were right or wrong. <laughs> it's, it was it was, it was, it was like, poker face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, th- thanks for that, guys. Uh, well, that's the end of the show, guys. Uh, where can we find uh, you on the internet, Satch? At Sashman3 on um, Twitter. You guys can hit me up on there. Greg, right. how about you? Okay, you can find me um, at uh, Board Gamers, and um, this is where it's going to get confusing. Board spelled B O R E D, as in disinterested. Boardgamers.tv, <laughs> um, and you can uh, watch the, uh, the the last series on uh, Amazon if you have Amazon Video. Okay, and what about you, sir? Women, you can find me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you can find me on um, uh, just uh, uh, uk. Uh, or if you want to write into the uh, podcast or the just in general, uh, you can find uh, you can write into podcast at zidosgang.co.uk and write into uh, you can write in about the twenty questions game or anything that we've talked about. Or if you want us to discuss something, then feel free to chime in with your fifty cents. Uh, I don't know why I fit so 50, 50 pence. Let's keep, this Brit- let's keep this British. <laughs> yes, let's keep this British. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, um, uh, thank you guys. Um, uh, this has been the Zito's Game Podcast, and we're out. <laughs>